perhaps a possibility to happen. Uh, as we've seen, anything can happen in these events. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how this one breaks down with some really, really excellent athletes, including a name that I just saw on my list here, Ferry Swan, the 2017 Rookie World Champion. So it uh, should be fun to watch him tonight. Oh, I'm, I'm very sure about that. We already had the Rookies competition uh, this afternoon, and that was tremendous. Uh, but you have to truly say... Uh, special times need special locations and uh, obviously we are not outside at the moment. We're in a studio here at the Bavaria Film Campus and this is Studio 6. This is where the magic is happening. And just to show you what Studio 6 really looks like, take a look at this. The Nations Cup is a really good competition, so we can meet and uh, compete again. It's been a long while. It's a new situation, but we are quite happy to be here. It's the same for everyone, but I'm enthusiastic to be here. I have a great expectation. I'm happy to be on a new Wettkampf. It's nice to be on a European level to be able to do a Wettkampf, even in this difficult time. Es ist natürlich schwer ohne Zuschauer, das vermisse ich, aber die können ja im Livestream auch noch zuschauen. Well, the athletes are very happy to be back and so are we and I'm getting to feel really, really comfortable in this beautiful studio. It's time uh, to meet the athletes of this Four Nations Cup and we're going to start off with an Austrian. It's Josef Leier, 25 years of age. And this is what you need to know about this man. Tall man, age uh, 35, as mentioned, 96 kilos, and a very tall man. Three, at the, a third at the Austrian Championship, and of course, the Austrian champion of 2019. You can also see his international merits, and he is definitely one of the Austrian guys uh, to watch today. We've got 11 competitors, uh, not the planned 12 because of one injury take out from the Austrian team. But uh, of course, we move on to our next athlete. He is from Sweden and it is Johannes Eriksson. Take a look at this big man. 120 kilograms and look at the determination in his face. He's going to have a great time and I'm sure we're going to have a fantastic time watching this man compete. Bronze medalists at the Swedish Championship in 2011 and a fourth place at the Swedish Osa Cup in 2020. Of course, his goal is going to be to claim either bronze, silver or gold this time because fourth place is always the one you don't want to remember last from Johannes Eriksson, uh, we're going to move on to a French competitor, Guillaume Moret. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sure that Troy is going to help me with the French names, as he always does, because we both try and do our best uh, to achieve the best pronunciation possible. Silver medalist at the French Championship in 2020. So uh, this man is definitely very, very dangerous in his competing. Uh, his qualifications, as you can see, silver medalist at the French Championship in 2020. As uh, mentioned, this automatically gave him the qualification. And today is very important uh, for the French, uh, the Austrian, and of course, uh, the Swiss team, because these guys are going to have today as a qualification for the individual World Championship, whereas the Swedish team is going to have one more competition before we go into the World Championship. As we move on to our next competitor from Switzerland, Cyril Pabst, somebody Troy Manning knows very well, 100 kilograms at the age of 45, but look at him. He is still as fit as one can be, and he knows exactly how to play this game. His qualification was a silver medal at the Swiss Championship in 2020, and that alone knows and shows what this man is still capable of doing. That was our fourth contestant of today as we proceed 
to athletes number five. Please welcome Alexandre Meurice from France. Let's take a closer look at this young athlete, 32 of age. That's probably the perfect age for a timber sport athlete. Bronze medalist at the French Championship in 2020 and of course silver medalists at the championship in France in 2017 and 2019. So this man truly knows what it feels like to grab a bronze, a silver, or maybe even a gold medal. Our next uh, athlete, also from Switzerland, the second competitor from Switzerland, Pirmin Gnedinger. Here he comes. And look at the face. He's got that certain special thing in his eyes. Silver medalist at the Swiss Championship in 2015 and bronze medalist at the Swiss Championship in 2020, qualifying him for this event uh, today. And one of the men uh, that really enjoys this sport. So as we move on to Sweden's Kalle Svadling, and this man certainly is somebody you should always watch. 112 kilograms, age 28. His best results in 2017 uh, being the Swedish champion and he qualified also with a bronze medal at the Swedish Also Cup in this year to make it here to Munich. You can also see his international merits, uh, especially the bronze medalist at the European Trophy 2019 is something he will most likely never forget in his career. As we proceed to the next uh, Swiss competitor, Christoph Geisler, a man we all know very well. At the age of 46, he is still a competitor that you really cannot underestimate. Uh, Swiss champion of 2020 and a 10 times Swiss champion, always trying to push himself into new dimensions. So Christoph Geisler is one of the hot rods in this competition for sure. But let's not forget the next man from Sweden, Ferry Swan. Uh, you already heard it from Troy. He is a world champion in the rookie competition. And of course, at the age of 23, there is so much more that's going to be happening with this man. Swedish champion of 2019 and a second place at the Swedish also Cup to qualify for today's competition. Ferry Swan, definitely one of the men to watch, not only here, at the Four Nations Cup, but at every event he competes at. As we proceed to Austria's next competitor, here is Armin Kugler. 115 kilograms, 28, 1.96 meters tall. And to tell you the truth, if you stand next to this man, it doesn't feel like under two meters. He feels like two meters and 20 big silver medalist at the Austrian Championship in 2019. Of course, in Austria, no competition in this year so far. So the top three of 2019 are here to fight for the Four Nations Cup and to represent the country. And there's only one more athlete missing. He is from France, Pierre Puberé, a man uh, with 105 kilograms at the age of 33. He is at full strength and the French champion of this year. He's a five times French champion and somebody you can always count on to make it all the way to the top. So these are our 11 competitors. As we take another look into our studio, this is where the competition is happening and our judges are hopefully gonna arrive soon with the medals for the competition. Let's take a look into Studio 6. Oh yes, here to come, our judges for today. Let's welcome Bart Janssen. As he stands to his timber, followed by Jörg Kurzenberger. He is delivering the medals for today's competition. This is what our 11 athletes are going to be fighting for. So that's our two stage judges. There's one more, and that's Jules Janssen. 
He's a video judge. Uh, we can see him now. It's real nice to have you here. Very important person, especially uh, in, at the state and in some situations. We're very happy to be able to take a closer look at our videos. And uh, everything needs respect. The judges, the athletes. To be honest, in times like these, the whole world needs respect. So take a closer look at this next clip. We are Timber Sports. United by passion for the sport and the competition. We chop down racism and say yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Say yo to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. So the media viral. We are Timber Sports. The athletes are getting ready for tonight's competition. So let's find out what the format looks like. This is it. In the first round, all athletes compete in three disciplines, underhand chop, stock saw, and standing block chop. Their times are converted to points and then used for the overall evaluation. After the first round, the athletes with the lowest points are eliminated. In the second round, the eight remaining athletes compete for the higher points in the single buck and springboard. Just six of the remaining eight athletes will go on to the final round. In that final round, the athletes tackle the hot saw. More points are awarded here as well, so anything can happen. The Steel Timber Sports champion is determined based on the total number of points in all rounds. 11 athletes are going to start into the competition. In round two, we'll be down to eight. And for the hot saw, only six athletes will be remaining. The first discipline of all, well, that's going to be the underhand chop. And we're going to give you an explanation of the discipline and, of course, the tool our athletes are going to be using. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut through a 32 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Oh yeah, the Four Nations Cup is about to begin. I hope you guys are ready. I am definitely ready and I hope Troy Mannering is just as ready as me as we're only about to find out about the heats of the first competition. In heat number one, we will have Josef Leyer from Austria all by himself, followed by heat number two, Johannes Eriksson versus Guillaume Moret. In heat three, Cyril Papst and Alexandre Meurice are going to be competing. Then we'll have heat number four with Pirmin Gnedinger and Kalle Swadling. In heat five, Christoph Geisler and Ferry Swan. That's going to be a big one. And in heat number six, last but not least, Armin Kugler taking on Pierre Puberi. Best of entertainment is more or less guaranteed. Over to you, Troy. Let's do this. All right, Marcus, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. A uh, few of those names on there we know very well. Uh, a few names have uh, not come out of the dust, but uh, have come to be a surprise for us. And uh, we'll talk about these athletes as we bring them out on stage for our first discipline here, the underhand chop. So our first athlete coming out will be from Austria, Joseph Laia.
Ran into Yosef earlier on in the hallway while he was preparing all of the uh, saws and axes and stuff earlier, and uh, he seemed pretty relaxed, pretty easygoing, and uh, ready for the competition here. And as Marcus pointed out earlier, he's a big man and uh, 191 centimeters tall. Got plenty of reach for that axe to get into that log that's mounted horizontally there. Next up is Johannes Eriksson from Sweden. And uh, Johannes Eriksson is the athlete that is missing, so uh, I've just been informed that this is going to be a solo event here for this particular discipline. And now it's all about Joseph trying to get through this block as quickly as possible. The underhand chop is, as uh, you heard earlier, about trying to split logs. And uh, for this particular discipline, his best time is 30.91 seconds. That is quite respectable. Um, now moving over to the other side, slabbing out some nice big pieces there. I wonder if he is actually going to manage to make the 30 seconds. No, not this time around. Big slab comes out there, steps down really quickly, but back up before making that next hit. Very important to have both feet securely on that block before you swing that axe. Otherwise, it could result in a DQ. And Yosef really working that block right now. Big heavy hits there, and I think maybe three, four, five more hits should do it. He's gotten through pretty deep on this side already. He's got a pretty hard piece of lumber right there. few more hits should do it. Putting everything he's got into this last couple of hits. A little hop there on that last one. I can see that block starting to wiggle a little bit and finally he breaks it apart at 120.64. So judges quickly over to check the final cut through on the block and make sure everything is all good. And we do have a flag on the play. So we're going to take a look back here at the slow-mo. And it appears, from what I'm seeing here on stage, is that a cut has gone into the foothold, which is something that you're not allowed to do here. And you can see it's very, very close to his left foot there in this particular shot. He's a bit too far over. So we do have a confirmed DQ for an illegal cut. So Josef Laya, I don't think, I mean, obviously he would want to have the time, but I don't think he's going to be entirely too upset here because the time he did have was a minute 20 and change, and this is way off of his personal best. So uh, I think he'll be more than happy just to let that one slide. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, the situation is as follows. If you cut into the foothold of the block, it does result in a DQ. It's called an illegal cut. So our next heat, we should have both athletes in the mix, and it will be... This time, definitely Johannes Eriksson. And following him onto stage will be a Frenchman, Guillaume Moret. And there he is. Guillaume will be moving on over to Stand B. And Johannes Eriksson right here in front of my position on Stand A. Timber. Three, two, one, go! All right, so our first head to head of the evening here between Johannes Eriksson and Guillaume Moret. 
Johannes Eriksson on the close side here. Guillaume on the far side. Johannes still on the back side of his log. Guillaume has moved over to the front side and is working to get through there as quickly as possible. He's got a very quick axe at the moment. Johannes now moves over to his side. And Guillaume is through in 27-11, a personal best for the Frenchman. Johannes Eriksson now working on the backside of his log, passing the 40-second mark here. A couple more hits should do it. There we go, 45.06. So our first fixed times are set. And barring any disqualifications because of illegal cuts, we should be good to go with setting those two times more or less in stone here and getting our first results. And you can see those are the feet of Johannes Eriksson. Swedish team opting for those shoes on the far side. Guillaume More with just a really quick axe. And those final couple of blows on the back side of his block really were effective. Slabbing out some nice big pieces. Yeah, very, very nice hits from Guillaume. And there, the final cut. And a thumbs up from the Frenchman who holds down the top spot and 12 points for the moment in the underhand chop with a time of 27. That is a personal best for him, as you see, and currently the time to beat in underhand chop. So next out will be Cyril Pops from Switzerland, 45 years young, and a man with some pedigree in timber sports. And coming out, Alexandre Maurice from France. 32 years old, 21st at the French Open in 2008. His underhand chomp is a very respectable 27-22. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right. Great start for Ciro Pops. Gets a couple of big slabs out of there. And again, the French using that Australian style of a fast axe head. Really frequent hits on the block. Lots of power in there, too, from Alexandre Maurice. Looking very good. And he might have a very good time here today. Cyril Paps and Andrew Maurice just, or Alexandre Maurice, excuse me, just passing the 26 second mark here. And uh, 30.06 for Maurice. And a 33.84 for Pops. Two very close heats right there. Nicely done for both of them, sitting second and third place. Guillaume Moret still with a 27 at the top of the leaderboard in underhand chop. But uh, fellow Frenchman Alexandre Maurice is sitting in second place and Cyril Pops in third. And you can see big slabs here for Cyril Maurice coming off of that block. Lots of power. And the frequency of the hits from Alexander Maurice as he switches over quickly to the other side. Great balance there as well. So necessary in this discipline. A quick catch by his axe two times. On that second time, he really had to fight to get it out. Otherwise, I think we might have seen Maybe a second and a half faster time from Alexander Maurice, which could have made a big difference. So there we see Guillaume Moret, Alexander Maurice, one and two, and Cyril Pabst in third place in the underhand chop. And that's the way it sits in the overall standings as well, as this is our first discipline.
Our next athlete coming out from uh, Switzerland, Piermin Gnadinger. And another big man, Kalle Svadling from Sweden. He will have stand B. This is a discipline where Kalle Svadling is very good. 21.33 is his personal best in the underhand chop, whereas Piermin Gnadinger has a personal best of 26.59. That being said, we have seen personal bests fall here, and we have also seen world records fall during the competitions here in the Bavaria Filmstadt. So anything can happen. Here we go. Heat number four. Two, one, go! And right away, Kalle Svadling getting that quick axe to work for him as well as Pierman Gnadinger keeping pace with the Swede. Gets a little bit stuck there, Svadling, he does, but a quick hop to the other side by Svadling. And that is a ballsy move right there to do a hop twist on that block with an axe in your hand. Uh, I tell you, that uh, tells you all about the motivation Gnadinger, meanwhile, he's doing a great job on his second side as well. Swaddling through in a 30.88. Gnadinger struggling a little bit to get that axe out as he gets it caught a couple of times. And he is now passing the 40-second mark, and he just gets through at 42.48. So, Kalle Svadling moves into third place with that time of 30.88, just 4.87 seconds off the fast time of Guillaume Moret. And Pierman Gnadinger is sitting in fifth place, just ahead of Johannes Eriksson with a time of 42.31 adjusted. And here you can see those quick axes, and they'll watch the hop around to the other side from Kalle Svadling. It is definitely one of those moves that uh, generally isn't done very often because it's risky hopping on a small space like that but you can tell the big man has plenty of balance and lots of confidence to go with it So the Mona Lisa grin from Kalle Swadling as uh, he's going to be happy sitting in third place at the moment. And he'll take those 10 points. But we do have two more heats. And in this next heat, interesting matchup. Young versus old. Experience versus, well, experience in this case is safe to say. Christoph Geisler will be going up against Ferry Swan. So Christoph Geisler from Switzerland coming out onto the stage right now. He was actually second in the individual world championships back in 2015 in Poland. And he's always been among the top 10 in the individual world championships since then. And even prior to that, 2012, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19. Always solid in those individual world championships. Ferry Swan, meanwhile, 2017's rookie world champion and... Last year, seventh in the individual world championship. So, a man on the climb. Keep an eye out for Ferry's quick axe and Christoph Eddie, Geisler. Eddie. His experience just Stands plays a huge to role North here. Timber. Three, two, one, go! And Christoph Geisler, he's got a quick axe today as well. He's going to be making Ferry Swan work for everything. Ferry taking short, quick hits, as is Geisler. Ferry Swan over to the other side, just uses the axe to stabilize himself there. Lucky he didn't fall off mid-swing. That would have been problematic for the young man from Sweden. Christoph Geisler, Ferry Swan. Boy, this is a great head-to-head -head battle. Geisler's going to get it in 24.59. Ferry Swan in 25.04. Great heat, two fastest times of the day. Fantastic battle. So Christoph Geisler just 45 hundredths of a second ahead of Ferry Swan and those two gentlemen we uh, wait a minute now there's been an adjustment in the time only 35 hundredths of a second ahead is Christoph Geisler in front of Ferry Swan. So 
Christoph Geisler at the moment, top of the ranking with first place in the underhand chop. Ferry Swan right behind him in second place with one more heat to go. Boy, that was an exciting one. Quick axe heads, fast movements, a quick save by Ferry Swan as he uh, got a little bit off balance. Uh, pretty much had all the elements of a really exciting head-to-head -head battle. I actually expected that Christoph Geisler would be using more big power hits and more accurate shots, but he has stepped up his game, increasing the speed that he is swinging that axe with, and it shows right there that he is ready and willing to bring it to take a win here today. And uh, that is the question. Will he be able to hold on to that energy and that gumption through this entire Four Nations Cup? All right, coming up next, Armin Kugler from Austria. He'll have stand A right down in front of my position here. European Trophy 2019 in Belgium. He was second, the European Trophy 2018 in Poland the year before. He was also second. He is one of the most consistent timber sports athletes out there. Meanwhile, Pierre Pure Barre comes out onto the stage. And, uh, well, what can be said about this guy? He has been challenging for the top of the mountain for a long time. Individual World Championship qualification in Norway in 2017. He won it, so he definitely has the skills to pay the bills. Let's see if these guys can put on an exciting show like the two ahead of them. Athletes, ready? Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Armin Kugler getting at it right away with that quick axe. Pierre Puy Barre, now he's picked up the pace and he's found his rhythm as well. They're sinking in with each other on a couple of those hits. Puy Barre moving to the other side. Armin Kugler right behind him now. Big slabs coming off. A couple of very strong guys. Puy Barre gets his axe caught. That gives Kugler a chance to maybe catch up. And it's going to be close again. Another exciting battle, but it's going to be Armin Kugler with 27-12 and Puy Barre with a 27-84. Oh, I can barely hold my breath here. These two guys going fast and furious, and they are sitting in fourth and fifth places now, selectively behind Guillaume Moret. Wow, that was a good battle too. Some nice, fast, quick hits there for both of them. Let's take a look back at the highlights in slow-mo. First few hits from Pierre Puybari on the far side in blue and Armin Kugler, big slabs coming off there. No personal best happening on either of these, but man, it was an exciting battle between these two veterans in the sport. And look at the precision of the hits there. Nice switch, and that's the kind of switch we're used to seeing. Nobody's hopping around on the log like a big blue and yellow frog. And there we see the final blow from Armin Kugler, taking that one down just ahead of Pierre Puy Barre. Now they've just done an adjustment of the time and Armin Kugler in fact moves into third place with a final time of 26.52 there. Pierre Puy Barre will maintain fifth place just behind Guillaume Maré. So at the moment, there you see in the overall standings, it's exactly the same as the results for underhand because it is the first discipline. Christoph Geisler with a distinct advantage going into the next round, and that is going, or the next discipline, and that's going to be the stock saw. Well, can you believe it? 46-year-old Christoph Geisler taking the lead after this first discipline. Troy, that was absolutely amazing. And we're going to take a closer look with the split screen of that decisive uh, heat with Geisler versus Swan. Here we have it. 
Yeah, Christoph Geisler, I mean, I was really surprised by how quickly he got that axe moving. I was expecting the accuracy that we're used to seeing with him, but uh, he kept up with the younger Ferry Swan, and you can see each hit is more or less timed just the same speed as Ferry Swan. So uh, that tells me a lot about where Christoph Geisler is at with his fitness level and with the training that he has had in the offseason. And we know that Ferry Swan is a skilled athlete, no doubt about it, and boy, how close was that? Two breaks, really really right on top of each other. Yeah, and the speed of Geisler at the end. He was, you know, he, he was you know, getting into that next gear in the last five to ten seconds. I thought it was very impressive. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a fun one to watch for sure. And that's uh, probably my, my favorite heat so far of, uh, of the events we've seen today. Also, the Kalle Swadling hop, I enjoyed that one as well. Not, <laughs> Absolutely. Not so I don't know if I could pull that off, to be honest with you. I mean, we're a couple of guys in the same weight class, and if I did that, I'd probably break my ankle. Well, we should give it a try, but at the moment, we have to move on to the next competition. That's Stocksaw. And just to remind you what Stocksaw is all about, and of course, the tool that's used, uh, take a look at this. Stocksaw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. The steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. We are getting ready to rock and roll. Here is the start list for our next discipline. With heat one, you're going to see Josef Leier and Permin Gnedinger. In heat two, it will be Cyril Pabst all by himself. Heat three, Ferry Swan taking on Armin Kugler. In heat four, Kalle Swadling against Pierre Puberet. Heat five, Johannes Eriksson taking on Guillaume Moret. And uh, in heat number six, Christoph Geisler, the current leader against Alexandre Meuris. Troy Mannering, are you ready to rock and roll? Oh, yeah, I'm ready to go. I feel bad for the guys that have to uh, manage through these first three heats or these first three disciplines all by themselves because of, of uh, one missing athlete. So uh, it started off with Josef Laia being alone out there for the underhand. Now we are uh, seeing uh, Cyril Paps by himself. But Josef Laia gets to go up against somebody this time, so he'll be out there. Now coming on to stand A for the stock saw, and he'll be going up against Pierman Gnedinger. And here comes the Swiss man, Pierman Gnedinger, now. Now, three weeks ago in stock saw, we saw a world record fall in the Polish championships. Marcin Dzikowski pulled out a 9.51. Keep a close eye on that time, folks. If anybody can beat 9.51, we will have a new world record here today, but that is going to be a difficult task. Athletes, ready? Warm up your song. All righty then, the saws are running. Here we go. Stock saw, heat Ready. number one. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Nice even start. In to win here over with Josef Lai. He's got a good start. But Gnadinger coming hard in on the upstroke. And Gnadinger's got an 11.69. With Josef Leier, a 12-4-1, both pretty nice times to start the competition off here in the second discipline. Okay. Josef Leier, there you can see, gets a really nice thin disc to start. Now, the reason why thin is so much better is because there's not as much wood on the outside to uh, have to fight against the blades of the saw. 
And there, a really nice transition from downstroke to upstroke by Pierman Gnadinga. And he was just a little bit faster on the upstroke with a nice clean cut. And a time of 11.66 puts him at the top of the leaderboard in Stocksaw. And then when we take a look at our overall standings, you'll see how this starts to change things a little bit as the points get shifted around. Now Gnadinga, because of his 16 points overall, is currently in the lead with Josef Leier sitting in third place. These, of course, will change as more results come in. And uh, next up is our lonely Cyril Pabst alone out there fighting against the time. And as I said, with Josef Laya in the underhand chop, it's tough to do this when you're uh, heading out there by yourself. You just have to focus on the time and do the best thing you know how to do. All right, Cyril Pabst positioning his saw. You see that mat that's underneath there? We mentioned this during the junior competition earlier on. This is a rel uh, relatively new development for the competitions because the saws stay running on the ground while the athletes have their hands on the wood before the start. And that prevents the saws from hopping around and changing position to somewhere where the athlete's not used to it being with the practice they do to get their hands on the saw as quickly Andy, as possible. So ready. here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. A little bit of a wobble on that first cut, but he found the line finally, nice and thin. Got to be careful that he doesn't break outside of that disc. It needs to be a complete cookie, and both cuts need to be within the 10-centimeter line. And from my perspective here, both of those cuts do look good. That first disc was very, very thin, and that is just the way you like it. Thin to win. He's got the thumbs up from Jörg Kutzenberger. So that means the cuts are good. And Cyril Pabst with a time of 11.06. A personal best for him moves into the lead in the stock saw discipline. And there you can see how thin that cookie is. Really, really nice. It's very important to keep a steady and stable pressure on the saw. If you don't have enough, you're not going to be cutting quickly. If you have too much, you could risk stalling the saw and stopping the blades from turning, which means that uh, you get into a bit of a problem with continuing your cut. It kills your time. you got to restart everything. It's just, uh, it's just about a bunch of proper amounts of balance and pressure, and uh, it's not just all about being a crow magnet and hammering that saw into the block. All right, so setting up our next heat here, heat number three, and this time we'll see Ferry Swan up against Armin Kugler. And here comes the young gun from Sweden. Normally we would see his mom out there and uh, taking video of all of his action and updating him on all that's going on and trying to help him become the best athlete he can be, but uh, unfortunately under the circumstances, that's not allowed. No audience. Armin Kugler now out there. When it comes to competition, he is all business, but one of the most friendly guys away from the competition stage. Warm up. So yes, Ferry Swan and Armin Kugler will get their saws warmed up and ready to go for heat number three in stock saw. Remember, these saws have had nothing extraordinary done to them. The blades haven't been changed. The motors have not been enhanced whatsoever. This is the same saw that you can buy off the shelf at your local dealership. Three, two, one, go! Wow, really nice start from Ferry Swan and from Armin Kugler. Ferry has uh, finished on his first disc. Nice clean upstroke and looks like he's going to have a good time here with 11.19. Armin Kugler... Uh, and the time didn't stop for him. Uh, there we go. Finally at 12.18 for Armin Kugler. There'll be a correction on that for sure. But Ferry Swan, good solid time for him. And when the corrections come through, Ferry Swan has actually got 11 even. That's a personal best for the Swede. And he moves into first place. And there we see the start cut for Armin Kugler. 
locks it into place. And everybody has their own style. And uh, yeah, nice no bottom swing at all for either of these guys as they set up on their upstroke. But Ferry Swan, wow, just perfect. That second cut was beautiful. Look how nice that disc is. So Ferry Swan with an adjusted time of 11 seconds is just ahead of Cyril Pops in second place and Pirmin Gnadinger who sits in third place. So Ferry Swan at the moment out in front and that puts him up in the top of the overall standings as well. But Armin Kugler, even though he got fourth place in that stock saw, that gives him second place in the overall standings. So he is in the mix for the moment. But remember, there's three disciplines in round one before we eliminate. In this case, it'll be four or three athletes and take eight athletes into round two. So you need to be among the top eight. And once again, a big props go out to our stage crew here. They get out there, they do a fantastic job of preparing the stage, cleaning all the sawdust away, getting all of the little bits and bobs off of that stage, because it's very important that the athletes, when they come out, they have the proper grip for their feet, especially when uh, dealing with the kind of equipment and instruments that they are dealing with. You don't want to have a slip up and fall down and uh, have an unfortunate accident here because the stage isn't cleaned properly and that's what we have to give big props out to our stage crew. It is just like a Formula One crew switching the wheels of a car, putting gas in. In this case, it's getting it completely ready for our athletes. So, heat number four coming up with another Swede, Kale Swadling. This is a discipline that... Uh, is fun for him. He likes this one. For him, the uh, stock saw 10.87 is his best time. Christoph Geisler, uh, excuse me, Pierre Puy Barret is coming out on this one. Uh, Pierre Puy Barret, also very strong in this discipline. And it's anybody's guess who's going to win between these two guys. It's just uh, about maybe a bit of luck in this case. You know, they're very evenly matched up. Warm up your song. And they ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two. One, go! Oh, good start by Swadling. He was very fast on the pickup. Pierre Puy-Barré, though. Yeah, look at that. He's caught up to him quite well. Swadling. Oh, yeah, Pierre Puy-Barré does an 11.27. Swadling an 11.59. Couple of uh, quick saws there. Both discs appear to be good for both gentlemen, so... Barring anything unforeseen that we see, we got thumbs up from both of our judges. That means those times will be fixed. Let's take a look how quick Kale Swadling got up there. He was very, very fast, but he took a thick cookie with a bit of an angle. And that's where you need to be careful on the upstroke because you don't want to get over that line. If you cut through that line, it's a disqualification. But he did a great job to have a thin second cookie, which is really difficult. But it was Pierre puy a little bit faster with a time of 11.15. And let me just point something out here. Look at the differences between the times from first to fifth place. Only 66 hundredths of a second separates the first five positions. That is insane. So in the overall standings, Pierre puy now moves into second place, Ferry Swan with 23 points. Still holding on to the top spot, but it's tentative at this point. Armin Kugler gets pushed down to third place with 17, only one behind Puy Barre. And Christoph Pops is sitting in, or Cyril Pops, excuse me, is sitting in fourth place with 16 points. So there's only one point that separates second and fifth.
All right, heat number five of six getting ready to come out onto the stage, and we have Johannes Eriksson. He'll be on stand A. And then, Yo Mare. Joining him on stage, we'll be moving over to stand B. Intense focus from Johannes Eriksson. Yo More just wants to get that saw on the ground and his hands on the wood and get ready for this. Here we go. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, good start from both of these guys. It looks like. It's going to be Erickson with a slight advantage. Oh, he's got a big advantage as he comes up through the top of 11.21. And Guillaume with a 12.92. That's fourth and ninth places respectively for these two gentlemen. Lines seem intact. Cookies are complete. No flags on the play. Thumbs up from the judges. So that means stock saw is done and dusted. Let's take a look back here. Really nice start there from... Guillaume Moray, excuse me, it's not done and dusted. There's one more heat to go. I think that maybe Guillaume had a little bit too much pressure on his saw, though. And the uh, chain was struggling a little bit, whereas Johannes Eriksson just seemed to have the right amount of pressure and the right angle. And on that upswing, uh, it was looking real good for him. And you can see there he's got maybe three centimeters to the line, so he was safe. Good job by... Johannes Eriksson, and he moves into second place behind Ferry Svan with an 11.04, just ahead of Cyril Pops in third place with an 11.06. And then looking at the overall, some uh, switching around again. Svan, Pui Barre, Kugler, 1, 2, 3, Pops, Swadling, and Eriksson, 6, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, excuse me, and Moray and Geisler. But Geisler and Maurice have yet to compete. So that will change things as well as Christoph Geisler will be coming up against Alexandre Maurice in the next heat. And then that will be our last heat in Stocksaw. So we saw an impressive underhand chop from Christoph Geisler who has obviously been uh, training to stay fit. And coming up to join him on stage will be Alexandre Maurice. Stand B for him. Completely focused on the task at hand. Last minute checks and last minute movements of the saws before the warm up phase. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. A little bobble by Christoph Geisler getting his hand on that saw. Maurice with a slight lead as they drop the first cookie in sync with each other. A big, thick brick of a block going to come down for Christoph Geisler, who will take it in 11-3-3. Fifth place in Stocksaw. Oh, but we have a flag on the play in stand A. So we're going to have a close look at these cookies, and we're also going to have a look at the line. And if there is a cut line, then Christoph Geisler will be disqualified. 
They're going to go back over and look at the replay camera. It could be a false start, but everything is up in the air right now for Christoph Geisler as his stand is under review. And the tension mounts for Christoph Geisler because he could theoretically take over the top spot here if his cuts are good and if everything was okay with even seven points. His time would have is is at the moment 11.33. But what we're checking is the timing by the looks of it from when his hands leave the wood at the start and whether it was a false start or not. So in competition control as well as on the sidelines, our judges are taking a very, very close look at this to make sure that everything is fair. I can't really discern from the nods of the heads and uh, everything if it's all good, but uh, we'll wait. Ah, we got a thumbs up. And uh, they were just discussing really quickly there about the position of his hands on the line. We saw this earlier with the rookies. We had a disqualification because of hands in the wrong position. But Christoph Geisler is a veteran, so he knows exactly where to put his hands so that he can get the fair start and a quick move. And there you see he got into position and on that saw quickly. He had a great time. So that means that he'll get eight points from this heat with Alexander Maurice taking five, sitting down there in eighth place. So Alexander Maurice is on the bubble here. Let's see where he stands in the overall when we see the stocks all results and the overall results. So Stocksaw, Ferry Swan still on top there with Christoph Geisler getting fifth place here. That means eight points for him. So when we take a look at the overall standings, that means Christoph Geisler will have moved into second place. There we go. And ooh, <laughs> look at that. Alexander Maurice is now sitting in eighth place. He is on the bubble with one more discipline in round one to go. And that is the standing block chop. Troy, are you kidding me? We've had two personal bests and the first nine athletes within only one second. Yeah. That's crazy. It's unbelievable, but that tells you all you need to know about the skill level of these guys. I mean, there's not much that separates them, and sometimes it's just a matter of luck and a little bit of wind. It's just small details, you know. Unbelievable. Well, we're going to take a closer look at uh, the two fastest, Ferry Swan and Johannes Eriksson, in the split screen. So Surprise, surprise, a couple <laughs> of Swedes here. Ferry Swan, you could see he didn't have much of a swing on the uh, transition, and neither did Johannes Eriksson. And, uh, I mean, boy, those guys, it looks like uh, they train together maybe. I don't know. It's, it's amazing. It's absolutely crazy. And, and, Troy, I know you've noticed some of these beautiful pictures here in my studio. Yep. Well, they show the history of uh, the first extreme sports, and I reckon everyone should know a bit more about the history of steel timber sports. So take a look at this. A woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Right? An axeman's gathering. This is Thomas losing it off the get to it. Oh, that gives me goosebumps. Uh, <laughs> honestly, uh, how beautiful was that, Troy? Just uh, seeing a bit of the history. And, uh, awesome, awesome. And I'm uh, happy to have been a little, at least a little bit a part of it. So exciting, some of these matches. And uh, we've seen a couple of exciting matches already. I really like that one between Ferry Swan and Christoph oh, yeah. Geisler. I mean, that yeah, nice. was a thriller. 
Uh, what about the wood, Troy? How important is the quality of the wood? Well, I'd say the wood is probably one of the most important aspects. And uh, we mentioned this earlier on, but uh, a lot of people might not understand what this wood is all about. Now, this isn't just wood that gets chopped off uh, down from some random forest somewhere. It's specifically grown and designed for these events here. And uh, I can tell you all about it. Well, not me, but this tip can. Let's take a closer look and enjoy. Timber Sports uses wood as a natural product. It is therefore especially important to maintain fair competition conditions and that the wood is sustainably grown. Hi, my name's Spike Milton, Global Sports Director for Steel Timber Sports. Together with Head of Wood, Mr. Bart Jensen, we have a wealth of knowledge and experience with long-term wood management. We have different partners for finding the good wood, and here we are on one of the plantations of our partner this year. One of the biggest challenges that I actually have as part of my role is to work with our wood suppliers. There are some beautiful young trees. These young trees are the future. For us, we have to find consistent and fair wood. The international timber sports competitions mainly use fast-growing poplar wood from certified plantations, as well as white pine. After all our still timber sports competitions, the spent wood is collected and recycled. A great example of this is wood pellets for biomass to be used for green energy. Well, this is not just passion. This is science. I think that's awesome. I really enjoy that. Uh, but what about the bracket? Let's take a closer look at uh, the bracket of the competition. Uh, we've got the overall in just a few seconds, look at that, going up and down, moving all around, and of course, Ferry Swan right on top at this very moment, followed by Christoph Geiser and Monsieur Puberé in a bronze medal position for the very moment, as we proceed to our next discipline, and that will be the standing block chop. Take a closer look at this to know everything about the discipline, and of course, the tool. Standing block chop. At the standing block chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 30 centimeters has to be cut through both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. Oh yeah, I really and truly enjoy the standing block chop. Uh, not because I can do it very well myself, but I love watching it. And we've got, uh, of course, six heats coming up for you, ladies and gentlemen. Heat number one will be Jean Moré uh, taking on Johannes Eriksson. Then uh, I'm afraid to say Josef Leier has to go all by himself again. In heat three, it will be Pirmin Gnedinger against Alexandre Meurice. In Heat 4, Kallis Swadling taking on Cyril Pabst. That's going to be a big one. Uh, heat 5, Armin Kugler, Ferry Swan. Ooh, looking forward to that as well. And in Heat number 6, Pierre Puberé and Christoph Geisler. A lot to look forward to, Troy. And it's back to you right into action in Studio 6 here at Bavaria Campus. Thank you very much, Marcus. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one as well. And I mean, uh, among the different disciplines here, this one is really... A, uh, a discipline of uh, positioning and power and I mean you know so many things play a role here first athlete coming out Yo More right in front of my position here and uh, getting his axes ready now you'll see he'll have uh, two axes with him as Johannes Eriksson will come out and move over to stand B uh, both athletes are allowed to bring two axes with and uh, some of them will have a, a gel or a spray with to lube up the head of the axe so that uh, for those first couple of hits it doesn't get stuck in the wood so easily because these guys have such an incredibly sharp tool in their hands and uh, and the amount of power that they're able to transmit down that 80 centimeter long shaft into the wood is uh, pretty incredible and uh, we'll get started here with our first heat in standing block chop. 
Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, Guillaume Moret, Johannes Eriksson, Johannes Eriksson in the yellow and blue, Guillaume Moret blue with red accents, and uh, Guillaume Moret moving over to the other side of his block already. He is attacking this with speed and accuracy, a little hop by his axe there as he gets working on the back side of that block. Boy, he's looking very good. Johannes Eriksson on the other side, still on the front side of his, and now finally moves over to the black, the back side, and it is a personal best for Guillaume Moret with a 27-7-4, taking down the top time of the standing block chop now. Johannes Eriksson still getting that axe caught in there on a couple of occasions, and that really bleeds the energy from your arms to try and get that axe back out. Take another swing. You have to have the endurance here, but you also have to have a really good angle of impact. Otherwise, you're going to get that axe stuck every single time, and that's what's happening with Johannes Eriksson here. He's trying to get that haymaker, that final blow to drop that block off, and he finally does it in a time of 58.65. And we have a runaway block that's heading off to the side of the arena here. He hit that thing that hard as the last blow, and it uh, just had a mind of its own as it rolled out of sight here. We'll take a look back at the slow-mo right now. We are with Guillaume Moray, and you can see just the angle of his axe, getting some nice clean hits in there, and uh, getting his axe back out and ready for the next swing. Quick to the other side, whereas Johannes Eriksson was still unhappy with the depth that he got in the cuts on the first side. When he finally did get to the other side, it just took him a long time to get through there because his axe kept sticking. Now, if you noticed when he came out, he didn't put any lube or any kind of, uh, of uh, spray on his axe, whereas Guillaume Moret did spray his axe prior to getting going with the discipline. And, you know, that's not always the end-all, be-all, but it could have made a difference for Johannes Eriksson to have a little bit of lube on there. So... Personal best for Guillaume Moret and Johannes Eriksson, 30 seconds off pace in second place for the moment. So Johannes Eriksson, even with that uh, relatively slow time in the standing block, uh, moves into first place just ahead of Guillaume Moret with his 11 points. All right, next up will be Poor Josef Laia again coming out onto the stage. He'll be alone as he was in the underhand chop, and this time he'll be alone for the standing block chop. Be curious to know how he manages here. A 28.36 is his personal best. And that is not that far off of Guillaume Moret at the moment. So let's see if he can make some improvement. A couple of practice swings there to make sure that his positioning is just Eddie, right. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, right on the line. Slabs out a nice one to start things off. Two hits on the bottom there. And making it three and getting a couple more on top to get some big slabs coming out. And Josef Laia really taking it to the front side of this block. We should see him switch to the other side fairly quickly here if he can get this one big chunk out. Really accurate hits here. I like the way that he is going at this. He's got a nice deep pocket on the front side there. Now he is going to work on the back side. And because he went deeper on the front side, he won't have as much to do on the back side. 37, 38 seconds has passed now. He's well past our his personal best, and uh, let's just see if he can get it done in under a minute. I see that block starting to wobble on the top. One more hit should do it here, and there it goes. 53-61, second place in standing block chop for Josef Laia. You can see how accurate his hits are there. Right into the same line each time. A little stick there on that shot. It's just always so impressive to me that 
These guys have such incredible control over these three kilogram heavy axes and then having to swing them for upwards of a minute in order to get the job done. I mean, that is just tiring of watching it. There you can see that top lock starting to wiggle a little bit and here's where it just let go with the final thread and the final blow to take it off the top. You can see he's just putting everything into those last couple of hits. Super slow-mo camera, fantastic, with all that wood flying everywhere. And there we see another anticipation shot, thinking that maybe it was going to go down earlier than it did. And then finally, that last blow knocks it off. So Josef Leier in second place, all by himself out there on that heat, which I guess we can't really call a heat, could we? Maybe we can? Okay, why not? So our next heat coming up as we take a look at the overall standings there, Josef Leier in seventh place, really on the bubble there. Still three more heats to go, so uh, we'll see how it all boils down for him. Pierman Gnadinga from Switzerland stepping out on the stage now. As I said earlier, the athletes are allowed to bring two axes on stage, and uh, one is a backup just in the off chance that uh, something occurs with their primary axe. And Pierman Gnadinga mentioning something's up with his block of wood. Meanwhile, Alexandre Maurice sets up on his side on stand B. Pierman Gnadinger with a little bit of uh, chalk on his hands there. Make sure that that axe slips nice and easy through his hands with the different moves each time they take a swing here. Ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Bang on time with each other for those first hits. Maurice starting to get a little bit faster. Big slaps coming out for Gnadinger as he is just throwing power at this thing. Maurice moves to the other side now. Alexandre Maurice working on the backside of his block. 17 seconds has passed for both gentlemen. Gnadinger now moving over to the backside of his. Maurice taking quick hits at this block now, and he should get this down quickly. Yes, a time of 26.34. First place in uh, the standing block chop for Alexander Maurice and Pyramin Gnadinger still working on the backside of his. He is just passing the 38 second now. 39.45 for him. That puts him in third place in standing block. And uh, good points for him at this point. Uh, but Alexander Maurice with a 26.34. That is just a 1.15 seconds faster than Guillaume, his country mate. So he is in the top spot for the moment. And you could see Maurice was just working that axe quickly. A couple of times he got stuck. He had to peel out some slabs there. But then when he finally got that axe working clean, he was quick. The standing block chop world record, by the way, is held by Matt Kogar. He re, uh, managed to get that in 2018, and the time for him then was 11.03 seconds. So you could see uh, very fast, very good wood on that day. And uh, strangely enough, Alexander Maurice looked a little bit disappointed with his uh, run there. Um, not a personal best for him, but still a great time. And currently in the lead of the standing block chop, and that puts him in the lead in the overall standings as well. Ferry Swan in second, and Guillaume Moret sitting in third. Okay, coming out on the stage now, Sweden's Kalle Swadling.
Next up with him, Cyril Pops from Switzerland. Kalle Swadling on stand A, Cyril Pops on stand B. Go to heat number timber. four in standing block Three, chop. Two, one, go. Kalis Swadling. Three big hits so far, slabbing out finally, and there the same thing happens for Cyril Pops, looking very good on his side. Both of these guys putting everything into it. Kalis Swadling now moving over to the other side. Or excuse me, Cyril Pops moving to the other side. Kalis Swadling still hammering away now. Finally, Kale moves to the backside of his block. Cyril Pops. Definitely with the advantage here as he is slapping out some nice pieces off the backside of his block. Kalis Swadling is a powerful hitter though. Can he catch up? One more hit for Cyril Paps to do it there. It goes down at 32.85. Kalis Swadling at 36.66. Not that far behind. Good times, good times, good times. Nobody yet coming uh, really close to Alexander Maurice with a 26.26 adjusted time. Cyril Pops now in third place in the standing block chop with Kalis Swadling right behind him with a time of 36.46. You can see Kalis Swadling, that's the front side of his block, just really putting every ounce of his hips into the twist and getting as much power out of it as he can. Cyril Pops also gritting for every hit and he really worked hard for the time there as well. Nice big slab right there. You could see pushing off of that back leg, twisting the hips, using the core strength to move that axe as quickly. And in the background, Serial Paps with this final blow. Ooh, one more to go after that. Excuse me to drop that block off and not too far behind was Kalis Fadling. 32-46 for Cyril Paps and 36-46 for Kalis Wadling. And again, it's one of those situations where you see the block wiggling and you think that one last hit's going to do it and then you got to set up and do one more. And you can see how much effort goes into that as these guys are out of breath by the time they hit it. So Cyril Paps, Kalis Wadling in third and fourth place after the adjusted times. And we're looking at the overall. Cyril Paps moves into the lead with Kalis Wadling dropping into fifth place so there we go, some changes going on already. And we are moving now to heat number five with Armin Kugler and Ferry Svan. So the Austrian Armin Kugler coming out onto the stage. He'll have stand A. This is a discipline where Armin is very strong. But we've seen Ferry Svan, the rookie world champion and seventh in the individual world champion, Chip, excuse me, in 2019, is no slouch either. But Armin Kugler, personal best for him, 2066, and a 2115 for Ferry Svan. Can Ferry Svan pick up the pace tonight? Or will Armin Kugler maintain his dominance in this particular discipline? Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber! Three, two, one, go! Ferry Swan getting into it quickly with those fast axe hits again. Armin Kugler right there with him though. And Armin moving around to the other side very quickly. Breathing this one through. Oh, Ferry Swan now moves over to the other side. This could be a very close heat between these two. But Armin Kugler looks like he is in the dominating position for the moment. Ferry Swan looks like he has a good piece of wood on the far side though. And Armin Kugler drops it in 24.56. And Ferry Swan in 25.97. And again, not that much distance between the two times. 
And we're just getting thumbs up from our stage judges there. So all the cuts look good for these two gentlemen. But Armin Kugler with that 24.56 has just moved into the top spot. And with the adjusted times now, I'm looking at a 24.37. And Ferry Swan with a 25.70 in second place in standing block chop. And you can see Armin Kugler, such a technician with that axe. Hey, every time just so accurately hitting that block. Watch the hits on the backside and here, Ferry Swan, similar thing, deep into the legs for those hits as he comes over to the backside. He was late getting over to the backside compared to Armin Kugler, but Kugler was just, yeah, technically sound. Each of those hits was really well placed and you can see here, one more blow and that drops the block off the top in a time of 24.37. And a couple more here for Ferry Swan to do it in 25.70. Pretty close between these two gentlemen. So Armin Kugler moves to the top of the standing block chop. Ferry Swan in second place, pushing everybody down. Those two guys were so close together. And that means in the overall standings, Ferry Swan moves to the top of the leaderboard. Armin Kugler right behind him and Cyril Pabst sitting in third place. So it's looking very good. One more heat to go in standing block chop and round one will be done. Will Pierre Puybarré be able to take over the top spot or will Christoph Geisler be able to dominate in a discipline that he is very strong at? All right, Pierre Puybarré coming onto the stage now. I don't know if I could ask for any more evenly matched heat here between these two guys. And there we see the Grand Daddy Caddy, Christoph Geisler, coming onto the stage. Forty-six years old. He's been around this sport for a long, long time. Standing block chop. Seventeen forty-four is his personal best, and it was at one point a world record. Ethnies, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! And Christoph Geisler with two good hits, but he got his axe caught in there and had to twist it out on that one big slab. Pierre Puybarré on the backside here, looking very good as he's thrown wood all over the place, moves over to the backside of his block now as Christoph Geisler finally gets around to his side just a couple of seconds later. A few hits into this, and these guys are already looking good for their time. They need to be 24-37. That's not happening for either of them, so Armin Kugler will have the fastest time of the day here as Pierre Puebarre drops his block at 29-64, and Christoph Geisler follows a couple of seconds later at 32-58. So that's fifth and seventh places, respectively, for these two gentlemen. You know, we talked about the competition wood earlier on and uh, how much work goes into choosing the wood and making sure that uh, it's the right and fair wood for these competitions. Other factors that play a role is if the wood is really dry or if it's very moist. And, uh, you know, that will determine whether the wood is fast or whether the wood is a bit slower. Um, the uh, guys do their best also not to get wood with very many knots in it because knots are really difficult to get through and we haven't seen any today so uh, I think they've done a really good job and you can see here a little bit of a, star, a sharp angle there for Christoph Geisler on that one blow and then uh, gets it back a little bit too shallow on that one but uh, Pierre Puybarré on the other side here just below my position nice final blow right there so uh, an okay time for Pierre Puybarré, 29.56. Christoph Geisler in sixth place after the adjusted times and uh, a 32.46. And that means that uh, Ferry Swan will hold on to the top spot, but Christoph Geisler moves into second place. Armin Kugler right behind him in third and in fourth place Puybarré as we head back down to the studio and to Marcus. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Troy. That's round one, done and dusted. And we definitely need to take another look at that heat five between Kugler and Swan. And Troy, hopefully you're going to support us with that split screen because that was a really, really tight race to the end. Yeah, it was for sure. And Armin Kugler and Ferry Swan. And again, it's that situation of uh, a guy surprising you with a fast axe, and that's Armin Kugler. He was really quick with the axe head. Ferry Swan, you can see every time he takes a swing, he's getting really deep on that back leg and then twisting those hips. But he got around to the other side a little bit after Armin Kugler had done. So had they been around about the same time, it might have been a different battle as far as the timing is concerned. But boy, it was really close. And here Armin Kugler drops it, and one hit later, it's Ferry Swan. So you could see how closely matched up these guys were. Well, absolutely. And you could see like Armin using all his strength, all this power. And, and Ferry, he was kind of, you know, he's got that big swing on his axe and uh, it looks a bit like a tennis player at times, really getting that in. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you, if you look at Ferry Swan's details, I mean, he's not really that tall. He's 178 centimeters tall, five foot eight. Uh, and I mean, in the world of, of timber sports, that's not really a big guy. But what you notice about him is he's all legs. His legs start at his elbows mm -hmm. and go down to the ground. And uh, I mean, he really uses those to advantage in all of the disciplines that he participates in. So it's, uh, it's a lot about how he trains. And, you know, you can thank his mom for that because she's a <laughs> champion skier and, and she films a lot of the stuff and, and analyzes everything with him. So you know that there's a lot going on in the background with that family. Oh, absolutely. And he's a true athlete you can definitely see that which brings us uh, to the next discipline in round number two only eight athletes left and we're heading for the single buck take a look at this single buck the single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long with this the athletes have to cut off a complete disc of a 46 centimeter thick wooden block the perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Well, now that you know all about the tool and of course the discipline, it's time to find out what the starting order looks like. We've got four heats and the first heat will be Kallis Wadling taking on Jean Moret. In heat number two, you'll see Cyril Pabst and Alexandre Meurice. Heat three, Pierre Pubaré facing Armin Kugler. And in heat number four, Christoph Geisler taking on Ferry Swan. Over to you, Troy. Thanks, Marcus. So now we've reduced our field down to eight athletes. Each of these heats will now have two athletes in them. And uh, we are moving into the single buck. Now, as you saw, the single buck is that two meter long saw. And our first athlete coming out is Kalle Swadling from Sweden. Now, the Swedes have been notoriously strong in this discipline, in particular, Ferry Swan. And I'm sure that we'll see a very strong performance from Kalle Swadling. I have yet to see Guillaume Moret on the single buck. So I'll be surprised at uh, every move he makes here. And I wish him the best of luck against a guy who we know is very strong in this discipline. Both of them, same height, roughly about the same uh, weight. Kyle is waddling a little bit more, but the weight really isn't the role player here. It's about the use of the legs and positioning and everything here. And we see both of these guys are actually wearing spiked shoes to give them that little added extra bit of grip on the floor. Um, and uh, if we get a camera shot of Kalle Swadling uh, just before we get that saw set from uh, Guillaume Moret, we'll see that he had, uh, well, not anymore, but he had his saw upside down and has practiced a couple of his strokes. Now, the best athletes in the world in this event will use the entire saw. You'll see the tip of the saw disappear behind the block and then reappear with each stroke. Now, the different styles that we talk about from time to time are those frantic, short, but very fast-moving saw styles, and then the long, flowing Entities strokes. Ready. Both are effective. Stand to your timber. It just depends 
three, who's best two, at what they're doing. One, Let's see. Go. All right, Kalis Fodling getting right into his rhythm and routine, and you can see that saw disappearing into the block, as I was mentioning. Moray on the other side having a very similar style, too, but Kalis Fodling using every ounce of his body. Oh, he got a little bit hooked up, but he still manages to get the block down in 1474, and Guillaume Moray is done it in 1754. So a good start to the single buck, and you can see... It was uh, Kalis Fadling who started with a really, really nice style, long strokes, and uh, it was a bit of a quicker start for Guillaume Murray, but then he got into the flow and the rhythm, and I only saw one little stick from Kalis Fadling near the middle lower half of his cut. Otherwise, it was more or less a perfect effort from him. All right, so our first heat in round two, the single buck, where the points increase from 12 points now up to 16 points for the fastest time. In second place, 14 points, and so on and so forth. And it is in the overall standings, Moray moving into first place with Kalis Fadling in second, but Kalis Fadling had the faster time there. So he will bank those points as we head towards the two disciplines in the latter half of our competition. And coming out onto the stage now, Cyril Tops from Switzerland for heat number two. Things are going to go a little bit faster now as we're getting closer to these heats. And Cyril Tops, the technician, makes a quick measurement of the diameter of the block. Interesting to see the markings that he's putting on the floor and everything. I guess he's maybe considering his foot positions. Not quite sure about that, but uh, gets that saw up and uh, ready to go. It's the first time I've actually ever seen anybody mark the floor underneath the block. So I'll be curious to know where Cyril Pabst places his feet. Meanwhile, Alexander Loris, he's got himself a magnetic level on the side of his saw. Now, that's an interesting thing to look at because if you get that saw in at a funky angle, then you might have trouble with the cut because you're cutting more wood if you're going at an angle. So that is a very, very smart decision on his part to set that saw in as straight as possible. Now measuring for placement of his foot. So many things that play a role here. Angle of the saw, body placement, foot placement, how you twist Andy, your hips and, ready, and use the core muscles. Unbelievable the amount of things that Three, go into the two, single buck. One, go! And a nice start by Cyril Pops, who's got a long stroke there. Maurice also using a long stroke, but he's a little bit faster with that saw. Just got to make sure that you don't get that thing caught. Maurice looking very good here as he gets towards the bottom, and Pops gets caught. Maurice is going to have a nice time of 18-17. Holy smokes, folks! Cyril Pops right there behind him with an 18-37. Ten hundredths of a second behind. Wow! Excuse me, 20 hundredths of a second. Nevertheless, very, very close times from both of these guys. Alexander Maurice and Cyril Pops, 17.87 and 18.17 respectively. Still not quite as fast as Kalis Swadling with a 14.51, which is the time to beat at the moment. And those guys are sitting in third and fourth place in the single buck results. You can see there, nice style though. The wedger sprayer, it's allowed for these athletes to assist in making sure that that saw doesn't get blocked up. But right there, a little bit of an angle change. Those big, long 10 centimeter teeth get caught and then your flow is basically destroyed. And you can see on this backswing here how the saw actually does bow, but it's about maintaining that flow and getting it back in line as you come forward. And you can see really deep Deep knee bends and pushes in the midsection from Alexander Maurice and getting that last cut. Something else that's really important to note, and we may see this yet, 
is that you don't want to twist that saw towards the bottom of that cookie because if it breaks off, then you have to replace the saw to cut off the last little bit of the cookie because the cookie must be complete. Now, looking at the overall standings, Guillaume Moret, Alexander Maurice, one, two, and Kalis Vodling in third place in the overall. Kalis Vodling was the fastest so far in the single buck. And now we're going to go to heat number three with our first athlete coming out, Pierre Puybaré from France. And then following him out there is Armin Kugler. This is a battle we've seen many times in the past in various different disciplines. We've seen Guibaré and Kugler go head-to-head. -head. Two very, very evenly matched gentlemen. Guibaré is a barrel-chested of a, a beast of a man. He is big up top. He's got a strong core, and he's tall. So is Armin Kugler, though. Both of these guys can use their long legs and their long arms to their advantage. Here, Kurtzenberger setting up the saw for Armin Kugler. And meanwhile, Pierre Puybaré sets himself up for a couple of fake draws on his saw upside down as we get ready for heat number three in single buck between France and Austria. Stance for both of these gentlemen. Very, very similar. Puibare, a little bit wider than Armin Kugler. But Armin Kugler's Ready. stance could change mid-stroke. Both of them timber. using spiked shoes, Three, two, by the way. One, go! Pierre Puibare right into the rhythm. He immediately getting fast, long strokes. This is something that he's so solid at. Armin Kugler not that far behind, but Armin Kugler's got a bit of a strange angle on his saw. And Puibare gets it in 13.65, fastest time of the day. Armin Kugler in 16.74. That puts him in third in single buck. And you can see if we get a picture of Armin Kugler's block, it's almost a wedge. He had a strange angle on that saw, and that probably caused him to cut a little bit more than he actually needed to but it doesn't look like he cut over the line, so his cut should be good. But it, man, it looked like it came close down at the bottom. He needed to cut one cookie. It wasn't over the line, and there is no line in, in single buck, I'm sorry, but uh, he didn't break the disc off, but it was a really, really wide disc. And here we see Pierre Puybaré. That was just a really nice, solid run from Puybaré with a time of 13.45. Still trying to wrap my head around Jason Winyard's time from 2007 of a 9.39. I mean, everything has to just fall into place perfectly to get a time like that in single buck. All right, final heat in single buck between Christoph Geisler and Ferry Swan. Ferry Swan's been working hard at this discipline. We saw him in previous events be, be very strong in this. Let's see how he does against Christoph Geisler here. We've seen these two guys battle it out already today. Christoph Geisler coming out onto the stage with his funky golf shoes. And he too measures four position for his leading foot. Christoph Geisler ready to go now. Ferry Swan comes out 46 to 23 double the age of Ferry Swan and Christoph Geisler is still kicking butt and taking names. I'm interested to see how Ferry Swan will do as he sets his saw. Ferry will put his saw in, a couple of ghost strokes to test it and to clear out anything that might be left over inside that groove that's been set by the set at check. And now position the saw. 
Christoph Geisler is ready to go. And you can see Christoph Geisler with a very, very wide stance. As I mentioned earlier when I was talking with Marcus, Ferry Swan's legs go all the way to his ears. Or Anthony, then I said elbows, ready. but uh, he can use Stand that to his to advantage. And he is incredibly Three, fit. Two, one, go! And here we see Ferry Swan. There's that frantic style that I was talking about. Quick strokes. On the other side, it's an absolutely perfect comparison here. The difference in the long strokes of Christoph Geisler. Ferry Swan, 15.07. Third place in single buck, Christoph Geisler, 17.58. That puts him in sixth in single buck. And we'll see how that changes the overall standings. But there was a perfect example of two distinctly different sawing styles. Christoph Geisler going for the long strokes. And it and, uh, looks like he actually hurt himself on that. Might have pulled a groin muscle or something. Uh, he had such a wide stance. And Ferry Swan... He was just uh, going like a bat out of hell on that. You can see here, long strokes from Christoph Geisler, Ferry Swan in the background, those quick, frantic strokes. Hey, whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat. At the end of the day, though, Ferry Swan got the faster time. And, oh, a little twist right there by Christoph Geisler. And it might have hurt himself a little bit. He was hobbling as he left the stage. So hopefully he's okay for the remainder of the competition. And you can see there... Those quick strokes, they started to get a little bit longer as we got down towards the bottom of that block. The great job by Ferry Swan. And Christoph Geisel, that never say die attitude. I mean, that's uh, what makes him such a competitor. So single buck standings, Pierre Pouille Barre still with the fastest time. Ferry Swan though with a good time and a personal best of 1485 in third place. Kale Swadling, his countryman, just ahead of him with a 14.51 in second, which means in the overall standings, we're going with Ferry Swan on the top of the overall standings, Pierre Puy Barre in second, Armin Kugler in third, as we go back to the studio to Marcus. Well, how good was that? Fantastic. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. And of course, uh, we're going to go for the split screen again and, and, and watch Pierre Bubaré take on uh, Kallis Wadling. That was a time of 13.45 and 14.51. So not a big difference, but still, today, Pierre Bubaré was just a class of his own. Yeah, and you can see here, Puybaré just really using that entire saw. Kallis Wadling was doing also the same thing, uh, getting that whole saw buried into the wood there. But uh, Pierre Puybaré, he just really had the solid uh, flow going throughout that entire heat. Um, and uh, there was no catching up to him. <laughs> I, I feel this is like a perfect build-up to the World Championships, uh, the individual World Championships at the end of November. Uh, Troy, are you looking forward to that? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, you <laughs> I, 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 I think... You know, the World Championships is when we get to see the epitome of the Steel Timber Sports world come together and really battle that out. And, and we've seen world records fall. We've seen uh, some crazy moments um, at the World Championships. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, it can't come soon enough for me. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's always great if you, if you, if you get the chance to look back to the, like, the last World Championships. If you remember Prague, I mean, that, that was uh, a class of its own. And uh, if you feel like me, maybe let's have a look at uh, some of the pictures that we had at the last individual World Championships. Oh, my God, how close is this? It's one of the closest heats we've had all day long, and it's Australia. When the crowd start, you know, uh, erupting, screaming, and shouting, it's it just really does give you goosebumps. It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. I've been working my ass off the last five years to get to this point. Is it going to be the checker moment? Yes, it is, and the crowd goes bananas. It makes some people nervous, it doesn't make me nervous. It makes me ready to go. To come here to the World Championships is, is one of my dreams. It has been ever since as a kid.
<laughs> how Goosebumps. Good. Yeah, yeah, how good was that? And then Amazon Prime, you know, there's only five sports on Amazon Prime. And, uh, well, Steel Timber Sports is one of them. So if you want to watch some of the old previous competitions, uh, yeah, you can do that now. Uh, as we uh, take a look at this first competition of round two and take a closer look at the overall standing for the moment... And there is Ferry Swan up on top with 46 points. Pierre Puberet in second position with 41. And then there's Armin Kugler with 36. As we all know, into the last competition, the Hot Saw will only have six athletes proceeding. So that's going to be very exciting to find out who's going to make it into this next round or not. Oh, wow. Well, let's not forget, too, we have to get through the springboard, which is an oh, incredibly yeah. interesting discipline, simply for the fact that it requires so much skill on so many levels. Uh, and you've just mentioned it. It is so special that we are going to go into detail right now. Springboard. Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees, climbing up over thick roots. First, notches known as pockets are chopped into the log. Two springboards are then anchored into these pockets. The athlete then climbs up to chop through a 27 centimeter thick block of wood in the fastest time possible. Round two, discipline to the springboards. Let's find out all you need to know about the heats. In heat one, Kale Svadling will be taking on Jean Moreb. Heat number two, Cyril Pabst against Alexandre Meurice. In heat three, you'll be able to watch Pierre Pupari take on Armin Kugler. And in heat number four, Christoph Geisler and Ferry Swan will battle it out. Troy, oh. I'm taking a big, yeah. big breath. I'm going to really enjoy this one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I got a, a message from uh, one of the steel guys down in, uh, in uh, Australia after the last event, uh, Lee Gooch mentioned to me that the guys are usually going for four to six hit pockets. And the only reason why I was talking about a three hit pocket the last time is because of something that Sterling Hart said to me a while back. And uh, one of the reasons why he is the current springboard world record holder for the time of 35.67, he managed to get three hit pockets. But Lee Gooch... He made me uh, think that thing through a little bit. Uh, even numbers are generally what these guys are going for in these pockets. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we get closer in there. But our first springboard head-to-head, -head, we have Kale Swadling and Guillaume Moret. Now the idea here, as you heard in the description earlier on, is to set the boards into the pockets that are cut and then move up to a level set another pocket and a board and move up to cut the top block down. So there's a lot going on here and this is where you need to bring so many of your skills to play. You need to be accurate with that axe. You need to be agile to get up onto that board. You need to be strong on the board and you need to be confident when you're up on that board to hold your position well because if that board is not placed exactly right Ethy, it's going to start ready. to sag and you'll see Stands how this all happens here timber. in this first heat let's go three two one go all right Moray set his first board quickly. And now Kalis Svadling testing his and getting up onto that board. Now Kalis Svadling was about eight hits in on his pocket. Moray, I'm going to say, I didn't count his, but I'm going to say he's around six because he was up a little bit sooner. And now it looks like Moray has got a four-hit pocket on his top board. So it's about getting that board in place. It's got a nice steep angle on it, so that will definitely help him when he starts to hammer away at that top block because he's got lots to work with on that back leg. Kalis Svadling, meanwhile, is struggling to get that second pocket set. Finally gets his axe put into the top block and sets his second board. Now it's very important that this thing is very stable because remember, you're on the top of that thing, on the top of that board with a sharp, a razor sharp instrument. If you fall off, it could mean disaster. So Guillaume Moret looking good as he works that top block. He's got a distinct advantage over Kalis Vadling. 
And the uh, time limit is 2 minutes 30. So if they haven't done this by the time 2 minutes 30 expires, then the time will automatically go out and there will be a DNF or DQ. Now, Guillaume Moray has moved to the backside of his, but so has Kalis Fadling, who has done a great job to catch up to Guillaume Moray. And he may well get there before Moray. Oh, wait a minute. No, I don't think so. No, Moray is going to do it in 136.20. Kalis Fadling still making the final hits on the backside of his block there as he gets his axe caught a couple of times. The power he's got just puts it a bit too deep into the axe there as he chips away and blocks out some of those pieces of wood and tries to get this block down before that time runs out on him. One more hit should do it. There we go. 157.34 for Kalis Fadling. So Guillaume Moray with a time of 135.81. And uh, these guys, you know, the, the big thing is getting those boards in place, those springboards in place quick as a wink and getting up top to try and work on that top block because that's really where the majority of the effort is put out. If you spend too much time trying to get those blocks in place or those springboards in place, then you're going to be out of power and energy by the time you get up top. See? Very nice pocket right there, and uh, Guillaume took a look at that, and he's like, yeah, I like that one. I'm going to go with it. Sets his board in position, quick check, and gets up there. Quick as a wink. Meanwhile, Kalis Fadling and the tape markings that he put there, he actually ended up in the tape markings a couple of times. Nice pocket, but he just second-guessed himself and kept hammering away at it. Here we see Guillaume on the top of his block. He's got a good stable footing in his springboards, on his springboards, excuse me. He went nice and deep on the backside. Callis Fodling's board started to sag a little bit, and that's when you start to lose the power, and then you have to use your arms more. You can't push off of that back foot and twist your hips, and then you run out of energy very, very quickly. And Kalis Swadling, you can see, he was starting to fade towards the three-quarter mark of that first pocket. And finally, the last couple of blows by Guillaume to drop that block in a time of 135.81. That's actually a personal best for Guillaume Moret. So our first heat in as springboard is done. Guillaume Moret, Kalis Swadling, one and two. And uh, that will obviously put them into the top spots, or at least Kalis Fadling in the top spot of the overall standings. And Guillaume Moray sits in third. And uh, we are going to head down to Marcus in the studio briefly. <laughs> Indeed, Troy. I just one question, those pockets. That's something we need to talk about because sometimes I feel like, oh, that's a perfect pocket. I can hear you. Oh, nice pocket. And the athletes still keep hammering away. Is that just um, not enough self-conscious? No. Why, why, why do these things happen all the time? Well, I think in the case of the second pocket by Kalis Swadling, um, he looked at it and didn't feel like it was good enough. From my vantage point uh, up here, it looked fine to me. But then again, in that particular case, the athlete has to be comfortable with the situation. But there's been many times where somebody said to me, yeah, all he's got to do is use his fingers to sweep out that one area and then put his board in and he's good to go. So, you know, sometimes it's second guessing yourself. Sometimes they have a better vantage point of it. Um, but, uh, you know, like Lee Gooch in Australia pointed out to me, the guys are aiming between four and six hits for a real fine pocket to get up there quickly. Um, you know, we know that uh, getting a world record requires you to get up fast. And, and uh, we saw that with uh, Sterling Hart. And, and he was saying, yeah, I had a perfect three hit pocket, which is where I was coming from the other day. Well, well thanks very much for the information. Um, I want to do something good for you as well, because you asked me about my shirts and, and my cap and everything. I did. Yeah, well, if you want to know where to get it... Uh Here's the answer.
I don't know if you can see it, but I'm, I'm, even, <laughs> I'm even wearing the socks and I love them. They're awesome. Nice. Representing. <laughs> yeah, but, but back, uh, back to the sports. Um, I think the stage is ready and we're very much looking forward to the next heat. I think the kids nowadays would say you've got a cool drip on, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next heat coming up with Cyril Pabst and Alexandra Maurice. Heat number two in the springboard. Remember, only six athletes are going to go from this second round, which included single buck and springboard. Uh, those six athletes will battle it out in the hot saw afterwards as there's some uh, moving and switching and shucking and jiving going on out here on stage between Cyril Pabst and Alexandra Maurice. You can see the guys from the stage crew securing these stumps with those big rods. They're also sitting on top of a specially designed frame that gets drilled into the floor and has a power chain lock on the top and the bottom of it to make sure that that main log doesn't go anywhere. These are all competition designed specifically for the competition to make sure that these tall, we'll call them trees, don't tip over and are as secure as possible for these athletes to give their best performance here in a competition setting. You can also see that the blocks on top have been secured with between six and eight 20 centimeter long screws that go at an angle into the top block. And um, they are the same size, the same diameter, the same length, specifically designed for this particular discipline by Bart Janssen and the Wood team. And as you heard from the earlier story Ready. on the wood, it's uh, either Stand white pine or poplar. Timber. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Cyril Pabst here right in front of me in red from Switzerland. And he's got himself a very quick four-hit pocket. This is going to be a quick one, I think, guys, because uh, now... Alexander Maurice is on top already in his second board and starting to work on that top block. Cyril Paps set his second one. He's got a nicer angle on it than Alexander Maurice, so he could have the advantage of power coming into this one. But Maurice is well ahead of Paps here on that top block as he's working hard to get through it. Looks like he's got a good piece of wood there too, but Paps is slobbing out nicely right in front of me. Some big chunks flying away. Watch your heads on the sidelines there, crew, as a massive piece went flying away. Maurice has moved on to the backside of his already. Could be a good battle here. That's the difficult one to get that backside going because it's an odd angle, but Maurice is going to get it off fast. There we go. Personal best for Alexander Maurice with a 10079. And now Cyril Papp switches to the other hand as he's going ambidextrous on the backside of his block. He's gone deep on the front side, and he drops his in 113.47. Also a personal best for him. Well done. And Cyril Pops just pumped his fist and a big grin on his face. You know, it may not be the fastest time of the day, but it's a personal best, and he'll take that to the bank anytime. So let's look at this again. One hit, two hits, three hits, four hits. There it is, four hit pocket for Alexandre Maurice and he gets his first board up there quickly. Deep cut on that first one by Cyril Papst. That's three hits right there, four, and that actually looked pretty good. He's got a four hit pocket too. So. No messing around with these guys with some quick pockets to start things off. And another perfect four hit pocket for the Frenchman as he gets his second board up. It took a little bit longer for Cyril Pops to get his second board set. And that was the advantage for Alexander Maurice as he had a time of 10059 after the adjusted time was taken care of, a personal best in Cyril Pops, 113.18.
also a personal best and puts him in second place in the springboard results. And here, the final blow from Alexandra Maurice. All righty then. So as the stage crew works hard, we take a look at the results. Maurice pops one and two now. Nice times. And the overall results, again, switching around. Ferry Swan, he stays on top. But uh, Alexandra Maurice moves into second place. Christoph Pops has, uh, or Cyril Pops, excuse me, sitting down in sixth place. And we're going to head over to Marcus in studio to take a look at this a little bit closer. We have four competitors and we have three personal bests. Uh, Troy, can you believe this? I need to see it to believe it. I'm actually not that surprised because we've <laughs> seen so many personal bests fall this uh, this day so far. Uh, and I'm really happy to see that as well. And, you know, Cyril Paps had a time of 113.18. He wasn't the fastest guy out there, but he turned and looked at me, pumped his fist, and there was a big grin on his face. That's and you awesome. got to like it when a guy can be happy about a personal best like that. And he'll take that to the bank anytime, like I said. Well, I, and I'll take to the bank a split screen because I think you'd be really interested in to see how you could analyze it when they're next to each other like we have now yep. from that last heat. So you could see Alexandra was just a little bit faster with his axe and got that four-hit pocket. And it wasn't that far behind that Cyril Pops placed his board. Now, this is the crucial one here. You could see there's the four-hit pocket there from Alexandra again, and he gets that board up, but he's got a bit of sag in his board. Not much, but, you know, it's enough to make you have to work a little bit more with your arms. And uh, when Cyril gets his board in, he's definitely got a better angle on his board. So he had the advantage of the power, but he was a few seconds back as they got up onto that top block. So the advantage, as far as time was concerned, was definitely on Alexandra's side. Now, had Cyril Paps had a bit of a quicker second pocket, then uh, it might have been a totally different game because his board placement was just a little bit better. And you can see Alexander Maurice's board starts to sag with each hit that he gives it here. And luckily, he got that block off in the time that he did. Otherwise, uh, it might have started to uh, really come down more and more. But that's when it really starts to kill you as far as working with just your arms to get that block off. And here you see Cyril Paps switches to the other side and switches hands. So, uh, yeah. And, and Good try, I feel that perhaps this is not too close to the tree. Well, I mean, on, he, on his he can be a little bit farther back because that gives him a little bit more power from the back foot because his board was at a better angle. But okay. again, you know, you start to get a little nervous and, and then you step in towards the, the, the block. So, you know. Yeah, and um, I'd be scared, you know, yeah. the closer you're to the tree, the, the, the safer you feel. Well, let's you know, not so. forget, these guys are over two meters off the ground with their feet. So they're, they're swinging an axe at about three and a half, four meters in some cases. So it's really high. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're going to go back to the next heat with Pierre Puberet, by the way, uh, who has a personal best of 55.07. So that might be interesting for getting a new best time. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Pierre Puy Barre is, uh, is definitely, you know, he's a big guy. So we often say, do the big guys have the advantage with the springboard? Not really, no. A lighter guy who's got a fast axe will have the advantage with the springboard. But, you know, Pierre Puy Barre has shown in the past that he is not afraid of this discipline. Neither is Armin Kugler. Both of these guys, you know, once again out there battling head to head. So this should be interesting. Both of them, big boys, a meter 90, a meter 96, you know, 105 kilograms, 115 kilograms. These springboards have to be in place and they have to be in place properly to hold these two gentlemen. All right, once again, our stage crew just doing a fantastic job today. Always have to send props out to them for getting these these blocks and, and all of these different elements onto the stage and set and ready in a matter of really no time flat compared to uh, how long it could take and, uh, and it just keeps our flow and our show going. So that's definitely something that we have to say a big thank you to them for. All right. Pierre Pouillabaré, Armin Kugler, France, Austria, springboard. The silence is deafening on stage just Ready. before the first swing Ready. of the axe. Stand to your timber. Three, two, 
One, go! Four hits for Pierre Puybarré and for Armin Kugler. Both of the guys up on their first board, basically tack, tit for tat. Puybarré now setting his second pocket. Now both of them are well past the five hit mark here. Armin Kugler just a hair quicker as he gets up on that second board, but Puybarré is not that far behind. And both of these boards are sagging under the power that these guys are throwing at that top block. Armin Kugler, Pierre Puybarré. This is about the closest head-to-head -head heat we've had in springboard all day long. There's been three before, but this one is super solid. This is the third one, in fact, you may excuse me. And now both are moved over to the other side of their block in heat number three here. Armin Kugler gets it down first at a time of 53.86. And Pierre Puybarré, not that far behind. A couple of more shots for him on the backside as his Goes down finally in 103.48. Armin Kugler, another personal best, falls to the wind here, and he gets a 53.86. Great job for the Austrian. So look at this. Two hits on each side, three hits on each side, four hits on each side. Up go the axes and up go the boards. That's about as good as it gets. There we see Armin Kugler. One, two, three, four, five, six should do it here for Armin. No, he likes to have one or two more. One more and he gets that axe up into the top here to set his second board. Maybe we can count those from uh, Pierre Puybarré. No, he's already up on the top there in our pictures. And you can see these two guys were really right there with each other. It was a neck and neck race right until the very end, but Armin Kugler was just a little bit faster on the backside with that really odd angle. But he seems to have this down pad and in control, and as I said, neither of these guys shy away from competition at the two meter plus mark, and they did a great job here, and uh, they set the bar for everybody else with uh, Armin Kugler having the fastest time, an adjusted time of 53.43, and that's a personal best. Puts him atop the springboard results. Pierre Puy-Barré with a 103.16 is in third place just behind Alexander Maurice with a 1.0059. In our overall standings, Pierre Puy-Barré moves to the top of the leaderboard. And we're going back to Marcus in the studio while the crew changes the deck up here. Well, we've got only one more heat coming up, and I think it's time for some really beautiful pictures. Take a look at this. Ready for any challenge. Cordless power made by steel. Only from approved steel dealers. for any challenge. Cordless power made by steel. Only from approved steel dealers. So Troy, if uh, there is something you want to get me for Christmas, um, that might be a tip. Maybe a cordless lawnmower from yeah, steel? Or, yeah. or, 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 or a cordless stock saw. We could, yeah, yeah, we could each get a cordless Autumn stock saw up. and do our own stock saw competition. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> that, that would be brilliant. If I take a look at uh, the results from Springboard so far, Armin Kugler, personal best. Alexandre Maurice, personal best. Cyril Pabst, personal best. And Jean Moret, personal best. And we've been talking about this time uh, in between where we're in, you know, COVID-19 break and everything. Oh my God, will the athletes be as good as they were before? They obviously are. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's clear that the guys have been uh, using their backyards for more than just gardening and uh, barbecuing. <laughs> uh, they've been practicing, and, and that's what we've seen. I mean, personal bests have been dropping like flies all day long, which is great to see. It just means that the level is ramping up, and uh, as we head towards the World Championships at the end of November, uh, I can only see good things on the horizon for all of these athletes that do make it into the World Championships because we are going to see monumental action there as well. We've still got one more heat to go in springboard. We've seen some really incredible heats already in the springboard. Um, I don't know. I mean, with Ferry Swan coming up next against Christoph Geisler, another two exceptional athletes, especially Ferry Swan in this particular discipline. Yeah, and we're only going to have six athletes proceed uh, to the hot saw. So um, could be anyone, more or less. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this last heat and then, you know, find out whoever's... Uh, finished this round two in position one to six so we know you know he's who's really in for the title today when we go into the hot saw jumping into the hot saw with those beasts i can't wait <laughs> <laughs> well athletes are ready for the last heat uh, Troy, let's get this one let's get it on yeah all right so our first athlete coming out onto stage is christoph geisler he'll have stand a right in front of my position here He knows this discipline well. He's had his ups and downs for him. Now Ferry Swan on the other hand. The young buck. He's a light guy, but he's also incredibly fit. So It'll be interesting to see if he can really lock down these positions quickly on the springboards and then get up to the top and start doing what he can do with that top lock. Christoph Geisler, his experience is going to play an absolute critical role here, and he's going to need to depend on that. As we've seen all day long, he is absolutely fit and ready to go. He stays relevant from year to year, and it doesn't look like that injury that he suffered during the single buck is bothering him at all as he chalks up the handle of his axe to make sure that he's ready to go. A couple of last-minute checks on the blocks here for both of these guys and a little blade oil, and we are going to rock and roll for this final heat in springboard and this will determine who of the top six athletes from the second round are going to go on to the hot saw. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Four hit pocket for Ferry Swan. He's on there and up quickly. It was uh, one extra, I think, for Christoph Geisler. And that board is sagging badly as he tries to set his second pocket. Ferry Swan already got a four-hit pocket. Beautifully placed. Great angle for him as he gets up to that top and struggles to get that axe out that was a bit too deep in the excitement of setting it up. And now he starts working on that top block. Christoph Geisler now placing his second board. A quick sweep by his fingers. Better angle on that second board. It looks like he needed a little bit more action to get up there, though. But he is way up high, and that's a distinct advantage for him as far as the amount of power that he can apply to the block. But, man, Ferry Swan has made light work of his block on the far side, and I think we may see a super fast time. Yes! 52-34, a personal best for Ferry Swan. Look how excited he is. That is fantastic. And what did I tell you? His fitness level and the fact that he's a light guy, quick on his feet, has made all the difference here. Christoph Geisler battling and turning around on the backside. Gets that axe caught. Now fighting hard to get that backside cut away and get the block off the top. And this never-say-die attitude is playing in right here for Christoph Geisler. Gets a couple of stuck axes, and we should see that block go down on the next hit. There we go, 124.81. Yeah, and you can see he's favoring that right, or no, that left hip a little bit. And uh, I feel his pain, uh, having played hockey a little bit uh, and hammering my hip a bunch of times. It's, it's no fun to have pain in your hips. Let's look back here. So watch Ferry Swan here. First angle, then flat. And there's three, and then number four to clear out the bottom. That is a beautiful pocket right there. Great angle as well on this side. You can 
see Christoph Geisler. He had also a forehead pocket there. There was a little bit of uh, drama in the bottom of his pocket, and that's one of the reasons why he didn't really have a good angle. There's one, two, three, and four for pocket number two. Ah, excuse me, five for Ferry Swan, six on pocket number two. So I miscounted for him, but nevertheless, he got that board placed nicely and actually used the ax to get up because it was so hard fixed in that top block. He had to fight to get it out. And meanwhile, Christoph Geisler setting his pocket here. This one took a little bit longer as he chips out a few pieces. What a great time by Ferry Swan with a 52-12 after adjustment. And we could see Ferry Swan had his second board placed and was starting to work on the top block. Now look at the difference in the angle. Oh, we don't get to see it, unfortunately. But the difference in the angle that uh, Christoph Geisler had in his board, had he gotten up there a bit earlier, could have been the difference maker because he had so much more angle, was able to put more power into his hits. But Ferry Swan, man, what a performance there by the young man from Sweden. You can see how happy he is about that time. 52-12 a personal best, and he is atop the leaderboard in springboard. Now we'll take a look at the overall standings here, and that means Ferry Svan sits atop the leaderboard in the overall standings as well, just ahead of Pierre Puy Barre. But look at the difference in points, 11 points difference, and then a one-point difference between Pierre Puy Barre and Armin Kugler. So the top three, there is a little bit of separation between one and two, Marcus. Well, absolutely, Ferry Swan on fire. And I think it's time to take a look at the split screen with the far aroused Ferry Swan and Armin Kugler on the other side, just to find out where the small differences have been. And, and Troy, I mean, I'm very sure you can see a very different technique on these two athletes. Well, you see that Ferry Swan choked up on his axe a lot more than Armin Kugler did. His hits were not powerful, but they were accurate. And uh, Armin Kugler, just a little bit farther down on the axe. Uh, well, both of them were more or less even on the axe in the second one. But you can see here, Ferry Swan, six hits for that pocket uh, and uh, just a little bit faster. Now, had that axe not been in quite as hard in the top block, it would have been maybe three or four hits in by now instead of just two. Uh, Armin Kugler, meanwhile, he's a big man. And uh, he uses that to his advantage when he's really hammering away. But you could see that the placement of the board and Ferry Swan confidence on the board, leaning, pushing off of that back foot, really using those hips, and then they both switch to the other side at roughly the same time, but it's just the hits from Ferry Swan feeling all good on that board. No missteps at all, and look at the celebration from him. Both of these guys did a great job with respective times of 52-12 for Ferry Swan and 53-43 for Armin Kugler. Very nice. Yeah, and Armin Kugler, I mean, he's been uh, part of the Steel Timber Sports family for many, many years, and, and he's a very he consistent uh, athlete, and he's got a personal best as well in this competition. He so, does. I mean, he's one of the most consistent guys. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so that's awesome. As we proceed to a final discipline, and uh, we like to call it the Formula One of steel timber sports. That's the hot saw. That's about the most accurate description I've heard of the hot saw yet. And uh, you remember last week, Dick Brown was standing right next to me. Of course, he is the world record holder still. And uh, I think it's a good moment to take a look at that world record, because that was pretty amazing. Hands on the wood. Get set. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. awesome moments. And we were standing right next to me and you could see Danny Ma, you know, congratulating him. Uh, that's the moment when he had been told that it's a world record. So he, he, he was just celebrating that he was fast and that he knew he, he got the points that he needed. And then, and then it was just a world record. And what he was also talking about, now, Troy, I mean, you, you know it better than anyone else. 
the hot saw, it is a maker or a breaker, isn't it? Absolutely. It, it uh, can destroy your chances of winning an event or it can, uh, like what you saw with Dirk Brown, um, it can really make the event for you. And like you said, it is the maker or the breaker. Yeah, and that's what the athletes say as well. Here they come. This is the one Looking at the individual competition, most of the time it's the hot saw that makes the difference. Yeah, probably the most important event, but uh, yeah, also the most frustrating. These saws are so incredibly powerful and dangerous. Usually the hot saw is a decider. Sands to your timber. Hot saw, hot saw. I can't describe to you when we're out there under pressure. Saw starts well, first disc looks solid. The cut is good. You know, you're always ending the competition on a hot saw, so you know where you're going to be at when you finish. So you're either at a very big high or just is what it is. Nice, clean cuts, easy and relaxed. The hot saw is for me the geilste Disziplin in the world. <laughs> Five, six, eight, Robert Ecker, three on the deck. Once the competition comes, anything can happen. Oh no, a false start by Sterling Hart. What a disaster. Yeah, it was a disappointment for me. I, uh, it happens though, it's part of competing. I saw there was three good discs there, but then that let that nose come right up underneath the crossover line. Fortunately, a disqualification. It all relies on the hot saw. If you have bad luck or if you did, did wrong, it's, it's part. Just oh no, oh, my saw. goodness. What an absolute disaster, the chain came off. I was not disappointed because everybody see that I can be with the guys in front. Yeah, it's the make or break event, you know. I think you love it and you hate it. Try to make three good cuts and no disqualification. The hot saw is where it's all one, so that's the best event. I am not sure if you can hear it back home, but it's getting loud in Studio Six. It's, it's getting really, really loud because the hot soles are warming up. So let's take a look at the discipline and, of course, the tool. Oh, and here we have uh, the overall standings before we do so. Let's take a closer look at this. Ferry Swan still up front with 62 points. Uh, Puberé in second position with 51 and Armin Kugler with 50. That's the top three at the moment. Of course, Geisler with 39, Maurice with 38 and then Swadling with 34. The six athletes that are proceeding to Hotsaw. And uh, as I've mentioned before, we need to take a closer look at the discipline and of course the tool and that's coming up right now. Hotsaw. For the hot saw, power saws are called into action and the athletes have a space of 15 centimeters to cut three complete discs off a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. Jumping the start or cutting over the line will result in a disqualification. These custom, handmade, race-tuned machines are built for maximum power and precision and to cut the wood as fast as possible in a competition. They are built with a 60 to 80 horsepower single-cylinder two-stroke engine, often taken from a snowmobile or high-powered motorbike. The hot saw can weigh up to 30 kilograms and its chain rotates at over 250 kilometers an hour. The cost of a competition hot saw used in steel timber sports is upward of 6,000 euros. Time to take a look at the starting order, and that is no big surprise. We're doing this in reverse order of the overall standing. So it will be Kalis Wadling coming out first, followed by Alexandre Maurice. Uh, then we'll see Christoph Geisler, followed by Armin Kugler. Pierre Puberé and the overall leader so far, Ferry Swan. Troy, I'm taking one or two big breaths. <laughs> I'm getting ready for it, so it's like, uh, woo. Well, you're going to need over. to take a couple of deep breaths to keep the oxygen here because it's going to be a, a gas-filled uh, moment here shortly with these... Uh, these incredibly powerful engines. I mean, we talk about it often, but 
This is probably the most dangerous discipline just simply because of the sheer and immense power that these machines have. I mean, uh, uh, 250 kilometers an hour chain speed. If that thing flies off and, and you're in its way, you're going to get damaged. And uh, you don't want that to happen. We saw that happen in uh, uh, a couple of uh, occasions in the past. Luckily, the chain didn't fly away. It just got uh, trapped. But there are so many things that can happen. A false start. The chain comes off. Um, you well, name what it. about the engines, Troy? Is that really like a snowmobile engine? Can yeah, it's I, like I, a, I still can't a, believe it. It's like a snowmobile engine or a, a, a motorcycle engine. I mean, they're just incredibly powerful. They're tuned so that you just can't mess around with them. So one start, the thing is hot, and then you go. And you'll see and you'll hear the different engine styles uh, once the guys are out here on the stage that, you know, we've, we've just, uh, for any of you gas heads out there, this is your discipline, absolutely <laughs> bar none. And we're going to see this interesting. And the thing that's also interesting is they've got 15 centimeters to cut three cookies. So you remember how difficult it was with the um, MS661 saw to cut just two cookies in 10 centimeters. Now you're dealing True. with a 30 kilogram heavy saw that's got centrifugal forces at play and you've got to aim that thing downstroke, upstroke, downstroke to get three good cookies without cutting outside the cookie or breaking it or cutting past the line. I mean, it's a headache just thinking about it uh, and, and not doing it alone. It, it's a very special philosophy because there's different motors used by, by different athletes. And, of course, you have, like, different styles, you know, with, with all the weights, more weights up front, more weights uh, down at the back. So, so everybody has really their very own hot saw. Absolutely. And you're going to see the different styles come on stage. Some of them have a long flat blade. Some, some of them have uh, a blade that's a little bit more, uh, you know, bulbous in the middle. Uh, you know, you're going to see the Rotax engines that are... You'll notice the difference in the sound to the Rotax engines. They sound <laughs> like uh, like a Harley Davidson when they start them up, where the other ones... I, I love the sound. Oh, really me nice too. Way. I mean, the first saws that go, my hair stands on end, and I'm It's just, a shame they don't have wheels. You, know, yeah. you could ride one of those. <laughs> well, uh, put on a pair of inline skates and drag that, uh, <laughs> that blade across the pavement, and you might have that same kind of fun. <laughs> I'm sure you would. Uh, I'm not sure about the safety, <laughs> safety precautions. None whatsoever. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so it really is the, the, the maker or the break. And, of course, we're going to give the athletes uh, the amount of time needed to get ready for this final competition. Uh, who's your favorite now? If we take a look at uh, at the standings, we have Ferry Swan with 11 points up front. So, so what would your tactic be, Troy, if you went into this last competition, especially being the last athlete? I think uh, my tactic would be to breathe and try and stay as calm as possible because the minute you panic with a machine like that, you've lost it. There's no point. Um, I think Christoph Geisler is going to have a very good time here today. He is uh, one of those guys that is very, very adept in these competition situations. I've never seen him look flustered. He's always ready to go. The only thing is that might be something that uh, is in the back of his mind is what's going on with his hip. So hopefully mm -hmm. nothing. Um, but we're going to bring out our first athlete now as we uh, are getting ready for competition. Well, let's get ready for competition, Troy. Take us there. All right, Marcus. Our <laughs> first guy out on stage will be Kalis Swadling. Um, I mean, we can safely say that all of these guys have experience with the hot saw. It's about the saw itself because this is a finicky, finicky, finicky machine for anybody who has ever been to or participated in the timber sports. You'll know this is not a machine to be trifled with. Now, if you're just seeing on the screen there the hashtag Kiss My Axe, if you guys want to get involved in the conversation or uh, just post some photos or whatever, um, hashtag Kiss My Axe. <laughs> well, we love the Kiss My Axe photos, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but uh, I tell you, going back to the hot saw here, yeah, but let me, let me just interrupt you for yeah. a second. If you go back to the German uh, national competition with Denny Ma being maybe in a similar position as uh, Ferry Swan will be today, and it's just, you know, keeping your calm, still going for a fast cut, but not too fast, trying not to make too many mistakes. I mean, with those few seconds and those big machines, anything can happen till the very end. 
It's really true. And, and, you know, like I was pointing out, the centrifugal forces that are at play there with that chain ripping around that blade at 250 kilometers an hour, controlling it and lifting it, moving over into place, and then guiding it through that log, because this is really all you have to do. You have to guide it through the log. It will eat the thing on its own uh, <laughs> because of the power it has. So, you know, you obviously have to give a little bit of pressure, but you're guiding it through the log. So you want to make sure that you don't over swing it when it comes out the bottom and you have to reposition it and find where you're going uh, on your upswing because you really have to pay attention inside those 15 centimeters to make sure that you have three complete cookies. And, um, you know, if you, if you have a broken cookie, DQ. If you go outside the line, DQ. If you don't have three cookies, DQ. So there's so many things that can happen here that play a role in whether or not this is going to work out for you. And the most important thing, I think, as an athlete is just to stay calm because if you panic and try and find those lines, then you're going to lose it. Well, try uh, best of luck to Kalle Swadling in that case because he's going to be our first athlete entering the arena. And from what I've been told, this is going to happen just now. Yeah, he's, guy, he's the guy that's going to break the ice for us in the hot saw. That's a tough position to be in as the first athlete out. So here we go with Sweden's Kalle Swadling, our first athlete in hot saw. And you can see his personal best is 6.62 seconds, world record 5.20 seconds. So he's not that far off the mark. And like we saw earlier on three weeks ago, we do have a new world record in Stocksaw. Maybe, just maybe, we'll get one here today. Anything can happen. A lot of mental preparation with this particular discipline, especially seeing as once that saw starts up, it can only be warmed up for a little bit, a couple of seconds. If the saw overheats because it's too warm, it won't start properly. So it's really about trying to find a proper balance. Listen to that beast roar. That is a monster right there, and you can tell how loud it is. I could barely hear myself think, let alone speak, and that, uh, that's what we're dealing with. So Kala will put on the safety harness now on the pull start. He'll prepare himself with the positioning of everything, and now is what it comes down to. You can see those last bits of checking is so important, mentally speaking to make sure that you've got everything ramrod straight in your head to what you want to do. All right, here we go. Athlete, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, good time for Kala Svadling, 6.72. You heard that saw bogging down a little bit mid-cut there. It was putting a little bit too much pressure on it. Could have probably pulled the trigger a little bit more to get that gas flowing through. But we've got the thumbs up from our judges and going to need to reset that block now so our crew will come out. And you can see from the replay... Nice thin block right there. Very, very close to breaking through, but he still managed to get three on the floor. So Kalis Vadling, he sets the bar with a 6.76, and that is pretty good time for the Swede. So the points for the overall standings there with 18 at the moment. Kala Svadling moves into second place behind Ferry Swan. Wow. Ferry Swan is going to be hard to beat. I mean, if we look at Pierre Puy Barre, if he gets a full 18 points, he'll be at 69 points just ahead. But uh, that's still Ferry Swan doing or as our last athlete. So it's, uh, it's really interesting how strong he is at the moment in the standings.
Basically, it's going to come down to Pierre Puy Barre having to have the fastest time and Ferry Salon getting a DQ. And we'll see. All right, our next athlete coming out on stage from France, Alexandre Maurice. Alexandre setting his own guidelines in that 15-centimeter area. He's also set one very, very close to the judge's line. And the reason why he's done that is so that he knows that if he gets too close to that, he's got to reset over a little bit to make sure that he is not going to cut outside the line. Now, when he starts this saw up during the warm-up, pay attention to the way it sounds differently from the saw that we heard earlier saw. on. All right, you'll notice that saw sounds a little more poppy, a little more tweedy compared to the growly, deep, throaty sound of the saw seconds. from Kala Svadling. This is a different style of saw altogether, but equally as powerful. Again, the mental game, such an important aspect of this, making sure that you know each move that you want to take before you take it. Athlete, ready, stand to your timber. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Fortunate miss on the downstroke, but he did get three on the floor, but in a time of 8-11. In other words, uh, he just a little uh, too zealous on the downstroke. He skipped it, but it doesn't look like he cut across the line. We've got a thumbs up from Bart Janssen. So uh, we are good for his cookies, but unfortunately, that little skip off the top, and we'll see that in the slow-mo, cost him time. Started well. His first cut was beautiful. This, this angle is a little bit better here, yeah. First cut's good. The upstroke cut is also very good. Nice and thin. And right here, skips it. Has to reset, and that cost him a good two seconds right there. Otherwise, he probably would have been around the six-second mark. So Alexandre Mois with an 8.04 corrected is 1.28 seconds off pace. But three good cookies and... That means that time will count. And that means he moves up into second place in the standings, moving Kala Svadling into third. Now it's getting interesting. Once again, a big, big, big shout out to the stage crew coming out here and getting everything prepared quickly and efficiently between each of the heats. And there you see the backside of Bart Janssen as he sets the lines correctly with that meter that he has so that he knows they've got a 15 centimeter set. All right, so our next athlete out will be Christoph Geisler. It's the man with plenty of experience here and as I said, I've never seen him phased 
by competition. He does look like he is favoring that right hip of, or his left hip a little bit. And we'll see how that affects his performance here. His personal best is 6'10". The world record is 5'20". And even with pain, he's fighting through it to get the points. Ten-time Swiss champion. I mean, that says everything you need to know about this 46-year-old man who's still competing and is still absolutely a valid competitor here against all of these young guys that are in the mix these days. Warm up your song. Well, we're hearing the same sound from this saw as we did from the saw before. And you can see the sparks flying from that saw because that chain is tight. You want to make sure that thing is really, really tight on the blade of the saw so there's no risk of it flapping around and flying off like I talked about earlier. Last minute checks on everything, final positioning of the saw, and then it'll be hands on the wood for Christoph Geisler. And there, checking his hip really quickly. He's obviously pulled something back there during the single buck. It's been, from that point on, a bother to him. And I am in particular love with those golf shoes of his. Classic Caddyshack right there. Ending, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that saw attacked it. Oh, no. We've got a bad cookie. Going to get one more in there and seven, nine, four. Unbelievable. He had to cut a fourth cookie because he had a half cut out cookie. And that means even with a fourth cookie, he's got a pretty good time of seven, nine, four. That puts him in second place. Imagine if he hadn't done that. He's got a thumbs up. So that was quick thinking by Christoph Geisler, who saw that that had uh, hit the saw had gone out the side of the cookie and had to reset and cut another one. An unfortunate situation for him as he went with a big angle right there, you could see. And that's the reason why he had to cut down a second or a third time, excuse me, after the cookie and right there is where it cost him the time. Otherwise, I think we would have been really close to another personal best for him. One more time, you could see the angle. That's a wedged block right there, and that's why he had a half-cut cookie, and he knew it, and he had to reset right there and cut another one. But a good job for him to catch that in time, get back up, and still stay within the 15 centimeters. That's experience right there, folks, and look at that. The time is still the second fastest, even with that faux pas. So in the overall standings, Ferry Swan at the top, Christoph Geisler sitting right beside him, and we're going to go down to Marcus in the studio and hopefully get another side-by-side -side look at these... Uh, these guys here in the top two positions. Well, Troy, uh, we're going to do our best at uh, looking at Geister's chain. I felt like it was glowing. Is that possible? Absolutely. It had this reddish glowing. And I, I, I believe I can even smell it here in the studio. That, that was crazy. So let, let's go into the split ski arena directly and uh, see the differences. The, I, I think we need the slow mo to get that yeah, done. Yeah, absolutely. Carlos Swadlin, Christoph Geisler. Christoph had a really good start. That saw just attacked the wood, but you could see how much faster Geisler was even oh, wow. with that cutaway. And uh, had he managed to get through that cleanly without the cutaway, I think we would have had a, a new personal best for him, if not really close to the world record. He was fast. But, but that hot saw, it, it was almost carrying him. It it's... took itself into the wood. And I mean, yeah, that's yeah, how it's... powerful those machines are. Unreal, really unreal. The top three is still to come up. Ami Kugler, Pierre Puberet, and of course... Uh, Ferry Swan, um, Ferry Swan is going to be hard to beat uh, if, if, if you take a serious look at the, at the times for the moment. What yeah, I mean, he's got 62 points. Uh, the next closest guy is 54 points with Christoph Geisel having already run the hot sauce. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, Ferry Swan's going to have to absolutely fall apart in his hot sauce. And uh, it's going to be up to Pierre Pouillet-Barré to basically have the fastest time of the day if he wants to win it and uh, take this thing away from Ferry Swan. But we'll see. Like I said, anything can happen. And, of course, Armin Kogler now wants to secure his bronze medal. So let's see what he's up to in heat number three. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Our four. next athlete coming up. <laughs> 
So three down, three to go, and our bottom three in, uh, or actually the top three in the overall standings are the last three to run, and Armin Kugler from Austria is next out. He, too, is also very familiar with this discipline. He's had his ups and downs with it. And a lot of the athletes will say they have a love-hate relationship with this discipline. They love it when they work, or when it works, but they hate it because of the drama that it causes. Now, Armin Kugler has the craziest blade wrap I've ever seen in my life. It looks like he's taken someone's Halloween costume and just wrapped it around that blade. All right. Quick look at his pull start there. So he'll set things up. So that pull start that he just set atop the block will be the one that he uses for competition. He'll use the other one to warm up the saw. The other one should be already locked into the saw's position. There we go. All right, that's all it needs. That chain looked like it was a little bit sloppy there, so I hope I'm wrong <clears throat> and that everything stays stable on that saw. He'll rewrap the pull start that's attached to the safety line. And the reason for that is because in the actual competition run, they will just pull and throw it away, and that safety line is on so that it doesn't end up normally within the audience or in somebody else's face, but also so that they don't lose it. All right, a little bit of a nervous breath from Armin Kugler. He needs to stay calm from this point on and get that saw started and get three good cuts on the floor. Ending ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Seven two zero. Oh, good time for Armin Kugler. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. That puts him in first place. No, excuse me. Second place in the hot saw. <laughs> And it looks like everything is good. No flag on the play. And so you could see here in the replay, he was a little bit slow on the start. The, the horn went, and then there was almost like a second delay before he got down to the saw and started making his cuts. But his cuts were very clean. Nice flow through all three cookies, not over the line. Solidly done by Armin Kugler with a 7-1-6 time. That puts him in second place at the moment in the hot saw results. So we'll take a look here. There you see Kalis Swadling still with the fastest time in hot saw. Armin Kugler with the second fastest time. And that means Armin Kugler will move up to the top spot for the moment in the overall standings, having 65 points. But that may well change unless everybody else, so just two more athletes, have major problems with their saws. <clears throat> Next up will be Pierre Pouy Barre, and then finally, our leading athlete so far in the competition, Ferry Swan, will be last. And, and there you see Armin Kugler. He is currently on that hot spot in the top of the rankings in the overall standings with 65 points. Coming up next, Pierre Puybarre. He is solid in this discipline with a personal best of 632, five time French champion, French champion 2020, and fifth place at the individual world championships in. 2015, sixth at the Champions Trophy in 2016. And uh, as I mentioned, Armin Kugler sitting over there on the hot seat. So he will stay there as long as his points are sufficient to stay 
in the top spot. Warm up your song. All right, just a quick hit on that saw to make sure everything is nice and warm. The gas is flowing. Pierre Pouivaret will rewrap the same start cable that he used for the warm up. A couple of quick tests to make sure his positioning is how he wants it. And then on goes that safety line. And you can see in the bottom right hand side of your screen, wearing the mask now, Armin Kugler will be keeping a close eye on this run from Pierre Puybarré. Seven, hot saw third place puts him in second place in the overall standing so Armin Kugler will stay on the hot seat for the moment as the judges check the lines and check the cookies and everything looks good we have a thumbs up from Bart Janssen and so that means that the cuts are good from Pierre Puybarré and his time will be official as we take a look back here good start throws away that starter cable thin is good for that first cut a little bit of a bottom swing there as he gets a thicker middle. And then the last cut. Very, very nice. And so a time of 7.79 after adjustment. Puts Pierre Puybarré third place in the hot saw. 12 points for him. So that means he's got 63 points. Armin Kugler has 65. With one athlete still to go. Now, Armin Kugler will win... The Four Nations Cup 2020 if Ferry Svan cannot get a clean run here. The only thing that will prevent Ferry Svan from winning is if he DQs. So the pressure is now entirely on the shoulder of Ferry Swan to try and get three cookies on the floor. So, if Ferry Swan has a time slower than 8.04 seconds, he'll get three points. And that means he will be tied with Armin Kugler, which also means that Ferry Swan will win based on the speed or his time total for the day. So basically, this is Ferry Swan's thing right now, and he just needs to come out and have three good cuts. And here we go, coming out onto stage now. From Sweden, Ferry Svan. And somebody's got his glasses because he couldn't find them in the back. He's like, hey, where are my glasses? Where's my bag? <laughs> Yeah, it's important. He has to have the glasses on. He needs to be wearing the safety glasses. If he doesn't have all of the required equipment on, he can get DQ'd. So this would be the only, the only thing that could possibly give Armin Kugler a win here, and that is zero points and a DQ for Ferry Swan. So he wants to make sure that he is absolutely in accordance with all of the rules. So he's got his ear protection his leg protection on. Now he's got a pair of safety glasses. Now he's just got to get everything else to work properly. And this is where 
it becomes a pressure cooker. And these small little instances, hey, where are my glasses? Hey, where's my starter uh, fluid? These are all things that play in your mind like crazy. And you're going to hear a different sound with this saw as well. This one's going to be one of those deep... I was wrong. Different, uh, different blade on that one. Quick check by a fairy of the tension of his blade. Seems satisfied with it. He'll rewrap and get things ready to go. And once again, Armin Kugler keeping a close eye on this run from Fairy Swan. Timber. Three, two, one, go. Seven, eight, one, personal best. First place for Fairy Swan, and that's all she wrote. Fairy Swan is your Four Nations Cup champion for 2020. And he's got the thumbs up, so it is official. And that is fantastic. He had the third fastest time in the hot saw with a 7.68. Still not as fast as Armin Kugler or Kalis Wadling Abba. <laughs> but he gets 12 points, and that means he has 74 points for the competition. As we look back in the slow-mo, he struggled with that first cut a little bit, but calmed down and had two smooth cuts on number two and three, although that angle was very scary coming close to the line at the bottom on the super slow-mo here great start gets that engine going and then pops the trigger they get that chain rotating at 250 kilometers an hour nice clean first cut and that's where that power of that saw is really evident it just wants to pull away from you and then finally it just sucks into the wood so that's where you got to control it and get this final cut nice and clean. Fairy Swan, great job. 74 points on the day and your new Four Nations Cup champion 2020. And he is down with Marcus Float right now. <laughs> well, Fairy, a personal best to finish it off. Can it be any better? No, this is an amazing day and I'm, I'm really happy. I mean, you were on fire for the whole competition, but going into this last discipline, into the hot saw, knowing it's all down to you, how did that feel? Well, I have trained a lot on the hot saw, and I was struggling a bit, but I have fixed it, so I was calm, just do my thing, and that's it. <laughs> what about the vibe here in, in, in Bavaria, in this Studio 6? Even though we do not have an audience, it felt pretty good, right? Yeah, I, th I, should, should, I th thought that it should be strange to have, not have no audience, but I have been so focused, so I haven't heard anything. So. <laughs> well, you're the Four Nations Cup winner. Congratulations. Thank Big you. shout out to you and all your fans. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All right, so Ferry Swan stoked to be the Four Nations Cup champion 2020. We'll also be seeing him at the World Championships. And uh, I, I mean, you know, it was just basically uh, all he had to do was get out there and have good three good clean cuts. Uh, it could have been 10 minutes long um, to get those cuts, and he still would have won. He had so many points from the earlier rounds as we take a side-by-side -side look at the two fastest men uh, or uh, two of the better blades here, Armin Kugler and Ferry Swan. Armin Kugler was faster, as you see there. Uh, and it was just by virtue of not quite so much upswing on that final downstroke. And, uh, you know, it was a good battle by all of these guys. They did a great job out there. 
Uh, but Ferry Swan ends up being the man on top of the podium. Marcus, what do you think about that last one? Well, well Ferry is so impressive. He's such a young guy, and he stays so calm and focused. J just like he said in the end, you know, he didn't have a problem with no crowd being here because he was so focused on the competition. And I think that's the quality of Ferry Swan. And, and this man can go all the way. You know, he's so focused. He keeps working on himself. A personal best at the end, you know, where you just have to you know, get your three cuts done. And, and that was impressive. I mean, I mean, the whole competition, he's been on fire. And uh, wow, I mean, he's a true champion and, and uh, worthy of, of winning the Four Nations Cup 2020. No doubt about that. Well, he's got two championships under his belt. He is the rookie world champion from 2017. And now the Four Nations Cup champion 2020. He's got a few other good results in between. Individual world championship, he was seventh at the Champions Trophy 2019. He was sixth at the Champions Trophy 2018, eighth. So, you know, he's among the top ten, and we see him improving from year to year. Yeah, and we see the slow-mos right now. So that's, uh, yeah, that's the way to win a championship. Great job. Absolutely. I love that with, with, with you know Ferry in the background, <laughs> just calmly getting his thing done. We, we got some really nice pictures. Um, maybe we can go close to to uh, the best pictures of, of the winner of Ferry Swan, and uh, maybe you can tell us something about it, Troy. Yeah, well, here you see the standing block chop in the background there. I mean, he was just putting every ounce of his body into that, and he isn't a big boy, you know. Uh, he comes in at uh, five foot eight or 178 kilometers, 80 uh, centimeters, 86 kilograms, and you could see his stance is so incredibly wide. He pushes off of that back foot and then really drives through his hips to get as much power as he can into that axe in the standing block chop. And I mean, it really is all about his technique. And as I said earlier, he gets a lot of help and video analysis from his mom on that one. Yeah, and I think a lot of uh, young competitors really enjoy what he's doing. He's, he's got that spirit and, and he's got that style and yeah, just love watching him. Awesome. Well, good run from uh, Ferry Swan, no doubt about it. So while Ferry Swan is uh, working in the background, you can see we're ready for the winner's ceremony. Um, maybe let's get uh, the positions 11 to 4 done. Josef Leier from Austria in 11. Uh, Pirmin Gnedinger reaching 10th position. Johannes Eriksson in 9. Jean More in 8. Uh, Cyril Pabst taking place number 7. Position number 6, Alexandre Meurice. Uh, he had a great competition. Christoph Geisler, you know, Fifth position, well, that's great, great stuff from this side. And Kalle Swadling just missing out on the podium with position number four. So that brings us to the top three as we await the winner's ceremony. And, of course, we want to be live when Pierre Puperé gets the bronze medal. Armin Kugler takes silver into his hands. And, of course, Ferry Swan is awarded uh, the gold medal here in Munich in the Bavaria Studios. So we are ready. Oh, you can already hear the sound. And that means we await the bronze medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Pierre Puberé, bronze medalist to the Four Nations Cup 2020 here in Munich, giving us a thumbs up. Well done, Pierre. 60 points in total and a time of 2 minutes 32.75. Here comes the bronze medal that he will take over himself due to COVID-19 regulations, giving us a big smile. Well done, Pierre Puberé. You can be proud of yourself. Great competition, keeping us in tension all the way till the end. So we move on to the silver medalists. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the silver medalists of the Four Nations Cup 2020. Here is Austria's Armin Kugler. Impressive 65 points and a total time of 2 minutes 19.98. Mr. Consistency from Austria, Armin Kugler. Receiving his prize, the silver medal, this very moment. And hopefully giving us a big, big smile as he lifts up the silver medal. Well done, Armin. Great job. Great competition.
And now we await the man who is not to beat in 2020 at the Four Nations Cup. Here comes the gold medal winner. Here is Ferry Swan, ladies and gentlemen. 74 points and a total time of 2 minutes 16.16. .16. Here is the champion. The winner of the Four Nations Cup 2020 here in Munich. And look at the smile on his face. Here comes the gold medal. And here is the celebration from Ferry Swan, the winner of the Four Nations Cup 2020. And of course, the national anthem of Sweden. Anthem bringing tears to the eyes of the champion Ferry Swan as he reaches up to the sky, showing the crowd and everybody the gold medal. Pierre Pibaré, bronze, Armin Kugler, silver, and of course Ferry Swan winning gold here at the Four Nations Cup 2020 in the Bavaria Studios in Studio 6 here in Munich. Oh wow, what a competition! It's been absolutely fantastic watching these athletes. Oh, look at those pictures. Awesome. Troy, are you happy with these pictures? Yeah, of course. We got uh -huh. three Who could really be? good and uh, deserved winners on the podium. I mean, you can't complain about that. Ferry Swan with a fantastic day today. Armin Kugler oh, wow, yeah. and Pierre Puy Barre. And uh, we'll see more from these guys. You know we will. Oh, of course. And it's going to be very interesting to see what Ferry Swan is capable of uh, doing at the uh, individual world championship. Yeah, looking forward to that for sure. How beautiful was that? Awesome competition. Now, I don't know if you can hear the clapping in the background, all the athletes gathering together. And of course, there's going to be more live timber sports action here with Steel on the 3rd of October when Steel Timber Sports goes for the national Benelux competition. Hopefully, you're going to join us again with that. And uh, we've got some great pictures coming up from today's competition. Uh, Troy Mannering, it was a pleasure working with you again tonight. Uh, it's time to say goodbye from our side. Uh, you've got the competitions coming up uh, on your screen right now. So a uh, hot autumn is going to be guaranteed with Steel Timber Sports Competitions 2020. And of course, uh, on the 29th of November, we're going to have the Individual World Championship here in Munich. And uh, no doubt about that, Ferry Swan is going to go for that as well as he can. We can promise you that so thanks very much for joining us uh, make sure to be here on the 3rd of october again and we're going to have the beautiful pictures of today's competition coming up right now from our side it's bye bye and hopefully see you soon <laughs>